Why do you call meme coins the purest form of money? First of all, all coins are meme coins. All coins are meme coins. Gold is a meme. Bitcoin is a meme. USD is a meme. Juke aspires to be a meme, as great as all these OG memes. It's actually really important for anyone to understand that. And here's why. Please welcome one of our faves, Meow, the co-founder of Jupiter Exchange. The most used decentralized exchange in crypto, with over $170 billion in total volume. Why is it so important for the future of our industry to embrace the zero culture? Imagine basketball, right? You have five fucking people on the court. Your opponent is zero. Is that fun? It's not fucking fun, man. So I think what's actually really important is how do you kind of like rally attention without promising the moon? Then that's the reason why I think zero is a very important mindset. One of the biggest critics of the crypto industry is that it's an insider's game. And in that sense, it's not that different from traditional finance. VCs fund you based on who is funding you. Full stop. They don't fund you based on vision, but they do want to know where you're going. You must convince people that you know where you're going. Why is pain so important for an entrepreneur? Because success is not created at the top. Success is created at the bottom. I really believe that to the core of my soul. How did we go from zero to 2.5 trillion in market cap in a PVP environment? Because the ones that survived, they led the way. Bitcoin became a trillion protocol by having a really big network of people who built for the protocol, who invested in it, and who tell the whole world about it. The key thing is us as a community. What kinds of behaviors do we accept? If we happily allow influencers to dump just to get a pump, whose fault is it? Mm. It's probably your fault, right? So as investors and builders in the space, we really work with teams that have proven that they really care about the project, they really care about the space, and they really care about each other. Now, what is your mission? Seventy-five percent of you that watch this channel frequently do not subscribe. If you like this show and think it provides value to you in your crypto investing journey, can you please, please, please do me a favor and subscribe to this channel? Hit the like button and leave a comment below. It helps this channel more than you can imagine. The bigger the channel, the bigger the guests, and the better the conversation. Thank you. Today's conversation is supported by Jupiter the most used decentralized exchange in crypto and the largest DEX by volume on Solana. Mantle, a leading Ethereum layer 2 with more than $2 billion in total value locked and $3 billion in liquid treasury. And Astar Network, a scalable network connecting people to Web3 through entertainment, blockchain development, and community events. People will love you. Of course. It's like a magnet. Authenticity is like a magnet. Because most people are not able to, because they're scared, right? But the fun thing, but but isn't it funny? Because like you almost have to not worry about if they if they love you. Hundred percent. Right. The moment you start worrying about they love you, you're gone. Mm. You know. Yeah. It's interesting. On one hand, it's so interesting, but but people overdo it. Right? So so so. Okay. Precisely, because you go okay, authenticity, so people love you. So they will do. People try to be authentic. Mm. Ah. <laughs> but the moment they try, they try to something, be honest, they're already not authentic anymore. Precisely, right? Actually, it's a good topic. We'll talk about it. You understand? Know, right? It's, actually, it's a good topic, you know? Like how do you navigate like the social environment? It's actually a good topic. Yeah. We're already talking great about topic, it. Great topic. Great we're, topic. We're already live. Oh. Oh, wow. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the trick, actually, I don't wow, tell. Amazing. That's the trick, I don't Holy tell. Holy shit. Huh? I don't tell and we start very organically, always. Wow, Always. amazing, amazing. Wow. Now he's, like, now he's like, fuck, what is all the shit that I said that I should <laughs> cut? Yeah, no, it's, it's great. It's great. I love it. Yeah, it's so great. It's so great. So, hey, as, an, so as an end, right? Uh -huh. As an end to something greater. Meow, what is your mission? Nothing. No, seriously, nothing. I, 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 I've learned in life that, um, I've learned in life that, um, the, the more you try to um, make it sound like you are doing something great in your life, you have a purpose in your life and that's so great and stuff, and then you are bound to fail. Because you, oh, this, this reminds me, right? It's like, um, this is actually really great. Um, you know, there's this uh, uh, clip by Jensen Wang. Yeah. He said that, okay, like, the, the, like people with high expectations have really low res resilience, yeah. right? You know, and then uh, and it's because you 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 build up all the, and the reason is just simple, right? You build up all these expectations of yourself in your head, or all the things you should be and can be, everything, right? And the moment you're not, that what happens? You break down. Mm. I have the actual clip there. I wrote it down. People with high ex expectations have very low resilience, and unfortunately, resilience matters in business. I don't know how to teach it to you, except I hope suffering happens to you. Precisely, right? So. So that, and, and, and that is the exact reason, right? Why I've learned to like, just not try to think, oh, my mission is blah, blah, blah. It never works, right? I think um, the, 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 the thing, I, I think what works a lot better is that's okay, you live your life, 
you tell people what you want to do and stuff, right? And you see where it goes. You know? Yeah. Do you think the same in terms of business? The same, for sure the same. So you come, because most of the, you know, I mean, schools obviously the wrong way of thinking it, but like VC, they'll tell you, oh, do a, do a pitch, you know, do a, if you're raising funds and one of the first thing is like, what is your vision? What is your mission? And all that stuff, right? Fuck that. So, <laughs> Fuck that. I mean, I'm telling you right now, guys, like, don't, uh, don't listen to that shit, man. VCs don't fund you based on your vision. Fucking fuck no, right? Like, that's the most fucking bullshit that I've ever fucking heard and stuff. I'll say it right now. VCs fund you based on who is funding you. Done. Over. Full stop. Right? I'm fucking serious, man. You can be, you can, you do, you, if, if I tell you one day I'm funded by ACCG and Sequoia and Paradigm and stuff, I tell you, I don't even need to say anything they'll fund me. Yeah. I'm serious. So it works, man. And if you think I'm wrong, prove me wrong. You know, <laughs> right? But then, uh, but but I still hear. But here's the thing, right? So 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 um so so they don't find you based on vision, right? Um, but they do want to know where you're going, right? People need to know where you're going, right? It's actually it's different vision, right? Anyone anyone can say a lot of stuff about where you're going and vision and everything, right? Now, what's actually really important is that you must convince people that you know where you're going. Mm. That that's actually more important, right? Than the the actual thing themselves. Because if it's about vision, right, I want to just say something like, oh, I want to solve hunger, you know, and there'll be a great vision to solve, right? You know, I want to make a trader company, right? That's, that's, a great, that's a great thing that people want, mm -hmm. right? So it's never about the vision per se. It's always about, um, it's always about like, do they believe in get there, <laughs> you know? So it's actually, to me, right, it's actually a lot, a lot more about like, um, so it's actually a lot, a lot more about kind of like, um, you know, com like, like having the right foundations and kind of communicating and giving people the confidence that can get there. You know, much more than about vision and mission and stuff. Like no one actually cares about these things. Yeah. And the real ones, they probably at least the ones who did entrepreneurship before, right? Yeah. They will probably know that your kind of vision or kind of goals will always change because you can't anticipate most of the things that will happen, right? Yeah, especially so, crypto. Yeah. So yeah. they need to know that you are also very self-aware and aware precisely, of that. Precisely, precisely. Yeah. And, 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 and here's the thing, right? Like, I think uh, I have been in this like uh, game for pretty long, and then. One thing you'll notice is that people who are very um you you you, you people who are very um like hung up on a given vision or a given idea of the world it just doesn't make it mm -hmm. right uh, whereas people who are a lot more um like self aware you know and like um they go like um self aware and they go like hey you know what this is what I can do this is how I think this is how I think about the world this is why this this is why I think so, now okay big difference right. This is, okay, I, I, I'll present you two kinds of visions, okay? Now, firstly, oh, my, my project, my blah, 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 is going to be a trillion dollars, blah, 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 we'll catch this market share, everything, right? Second type, right? Okay, we think the world is going this way, right? Here are the data points of where the world is going. Hmm. Here's my personal experience and not just something I write on the paper and stuff, right? and this test, but here's my personal experience and counter in 20 points of view about where I think it's going. Right? Mm. And here's how we think here's how we think we can leverage on that. Right? Now, which one is a lot more firm and confident? Right? Yeah. You know, the second one. Of course. It's right? Because it's practical. Yeah, practical, right? Now he's confident, right? Yeah. I, I think I think a lot of like I think, I think a lot of people in the, especially when they first start out, they they, they, they they get sucked into all this like vision talk. Yeah. And then and then they get very stressed out about having to come up with a vision. So I'm not kidding. I I can't tell you how many people I, I met. That just spend hours and weeks and months just stressing over their positioning statement and everything, right? Uh, whereas just thinking about, hey, whereas just actually like, um, like grounding themselves you know, in confidence, you know? Yeah. Uh, yesterday I had uh, JP Thor, uh -huh. the founder of Thor Chain, yeah, right yeah, yeah. here at the, uh -huh. this spot. And he was actually telling me, I don't even have a plan, right? I just execute and I just see where the fuck I'm going. And I kind of like, imp like I'm obviously it's not all random. But I'm just going for it instead of strategizing for a long time and having these great goals and great plans. And if I think about my personal experience with businesses, which I've been doing for like 10 years, every time I had the same issue with my co-founders, they were like, Kevin, where are we going? I'm like, okay, more or less there, but like, it's going to change all the time, right? You need to kind of figure things out on the fly. And they were feeling very uncomfortable with that. So, so, so it's actually a really good point, right? I think that, that so, so when we talked about the need for um, projects, entrepreneurs to kind of plan, Partly it is um, what they hear, but the other part is the pressure, you know? There's so much pressure from like, uh, from others to say, you must know exactly what you're doing, you know, must have a plan and your co-founders and your teammates have a plan, the, the team, everything, the right? The teammates, the employees, they need the to- The community too, the community too, Absolutely. right? The community will say, uh, say all the kinds of things too, right? So I think 
Yeah, it's definitely true, right? You're hundred percent right. Yeah. So I think that's actually what's actually really important here is to um, it's not the plan, it is certainty and confidence and intention, right? Now, confidence in you, right? Confidence in themselves, mm. right? Certainty about okay, cool, all right. Uh, having the appropriate level of certainty, okay. I think I think one thing that I do a lot these days is to say, hey, um, these are things that we know. These are things that we don't know. Right. So given given these things that we know and things that we don't know, what is the appropriate amount of certainty mm. on the end? You know? So so I I try to do a lot of that. Um and then it's intention. I think here's a key thing for intention, right? What's actually absolutely important is that people must believe, whether it's investors or like community or team members, they must believe they have the right intention. Mm. Uh, so I think what 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 actually one really problematic thing here is that I think um that we when people don't actually believe you have the right intention, when they don't actually think that you have a clear sense of like the the amount of something that is needed, when they don't have confidence in you as a person or themselves as individuals, the whole thing breaks down, mm. right? So I feel like and, and ironically, right, trying to rush to a vision or plan actually hurts them, mm. you know, because when you when 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 you when you communicate a plan or you communicate a vision that is not based on like really a really strong grasp of like re- reality and intentions. Everything actually breaks down. It breaks down trust, yeah, the, uh, right? Yeah. You know? Or you have to stick to it, but it's not the right thing, right? You Precisely. have to stick to it to show to other people, hey, this Precisely. is the plan, this was the plan, but like, no, actually it's not the right thing, right? Precisely. So yeah, so I, I, I feel like these days I model my thinking a lot more in terms of um, um, certainty and I model my intentions a lot more in terms of like, uh, model the plan a lot less in terms of like big words like vision, you know, or, 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 or very different the plan, but more along with, okay, like, like certainty, confidence, and intention. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and one more thing, commitment too. Commitment. You know, like what am I willing to commit to? You know, right? Yeah. Like Kevin, I think we talked about it yesterday, right? You know, like, I mean, like, I, I think WSH should be like the biggest and best Web3 property in the world, mm. you know, in crypto. You know, right? So it's like we don't know a lot. Of, we I, I, a lot of we don't know a lot of a lot of the plans yet. But can you commit to that? Certainly. I already started pitching it. Let's go to Raul. Let's go. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that's how that's how you do it. You know. <laughs> yeah. So back to the Nvidia CEO video clip, right? Why is pain so important for an entrepreneur? Oh, because like. Can you, um, are you able to do a pull up without, uh, can you do, how do you do one pull up? You know, you suffer through zero pull ups. <laughs> right? How do you do five pull ups? You suffer through, you know, one to four pull ups. How do you do 20 pull ups? You know, right? It's up through that. I mean, how do you, um, how do you do, um, how do you do one single master up? Right? You know, you suffer through like, you know, mm-hmm. like, like endless calluses. I mean, just kind of shit, bro. You know, right? You know? Um, I mean, like, how do you how do you do handstand? You you get embarrassed by falling down through multiple handstands, right? You know, mm-hmm. just to it's like it's the same thing. I, I feel like I feel like people have a very very good um um appreciation in the, in the gym, in the gym, yeah. right? They understand that like the the no pain no gain theory is quite well understood in the gym, right? It's also very well understood as babies, right? You, you never, if you see a baby fall down, you never go like, hey, you fell down, stop falling, stop falling, bitch, stop walking, and stop, stop trying, you know what I'm saying? You never say that, right? Make sense? But but the, the baby fell, the baby felt pain, mm. right? The baby, and also for example, the, the, yeah, do, do you think, how do you think a baby learns not to actually pour hot water over all of itself? By touching something hot. I go, what the fuck? We all burn our hand before, always, right? And because, that that that's actually what um pain does to you, you know. Uh, I think pain uh pain uh you 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 hone your muscles, you grow your calluses, you build self awareness, and there's nothing like ch- no amount of no more education, no amount of Ivy League, no more creativity can teach you the feeling of burning your hand. Full stop. Done. Mm. Over. Right. I don't care what they talk about AI and everything and stuff. Right. No amount of education can do that. You must burn your fucking hand. Right, you must feel the fucking pain, your muscle fibers. You know what I'm saying? You know, right? You must actually feel the embarrassment. Right? You know, like I did stand up before. I did stand up, I did stand up a couple of times before. And then telling you, man, holy fuck, that was fucking brutal, man. But like, but they taught me a lot. Do you have some examples? Big failures. Oh, stand up. Stand up comedy. I'll tell you one. I did stand up ah. comedy, right? And then that was like the most brutal um 
experience of my life. Like most fucking brutal, man. What, the, like, first, the first stand-up? And then you No, the ironically, continue, the first or? one was actually pretty good. My, my first open one was actually pretty good, right? And then, I, and then after that, I got overconfident. I went for a second one and stuff. It was really fucking bad. So I, I didn't prepare. I went in. I was expecting people to laugh and then they weren't laughing. You know, they just stared at me like blank. In English or in Chinese? Uh, English. Yeah, English, right? And a blank, right? Mm. And then like, uh, and then I was like, I was frozen. And then the, the, the key thing was this, the key thing was this, I had expectations, mm. right? I went in there expecting to say something and then they would laugh, right? They didn't laugh. And after, because I had the expectations, I broke down. Yeah. Right? I completely broke down, right? So the whole thing was just like me stumbling across, saying shit, everything was so bad, right? <laughs> you know, it was really fucking bad, right? And, and, and so, but, 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 but that helped me grow, right? I think, uh, you know, I think there's this thing called a post-traumatic growth. Mm. Someone taught that to me. You know, some very wise man told me that. Uh, post-traumatic growth. And he was like, okay, you know what? You, you go through a certain trauma and you grow later. And it was true. Because after that, I was like, okay, I'm not going to fucking repeat that again. Right? So I did everything I did. So from then on, I was like, I did everything I did to try to not avoid that again. Right? And, that, that, and that's actually why I think, um, I mean, I think uh, my... My talk at Breakpoint last year was extremely well received, right? That was the talk I did when I launched Jupiter, mm. Jupiter Token, right? Mm. Um, it was also um, Jupiter's like, first like, public presentation mm. because as you know, right, Jupiter has been building for a number of years before mm. we, we, we uh, went public, right? Absolutely. So, um, so, but I will tell you one thing, right? Everyone loved the presentation, right? But I wouldn't have been able to do that if I didn't fuck up really fucking bad. Right. So anyway, after I fuck up really fucking bad, I'm like, okay, I'm never going to fucking like, it's almost like taking your hand and putting hot water and then fuck, I'm not going to do that again. No fucking way, right? So I'm like, I, 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 pre I, I prepped like crazy. I got all my notes down. I hired a stand-up coach, right? And I'm saying, mm. you know, right? And then, and, 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 and importantly, my psyche when I went on stage was stoic, you know, right? Was stoic. I'm like, okay, it doesn't matter if people cheer or not cheer and stuff. I'm going to just do my stuff, Right. And obviously, I, I got my whole team to stand on front stage to cheer. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right? I still did it anyway, obviously. Right? To I'm start saying, the to crowd start the effect. Thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what no, you, but, did, what you didn't I, have I, for the stand-up, yeah, right? precisely. But remember, I wouldn't have known all That's these things. That's why he hired all these people. Uh, shh. <laughs> yeah, so, 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 so if I, I were on stage and you see a bunch of people and stuff, know that they are... Fiverr, Fiverr. <laughs> Fiverr. I'm not fucking kidding, man. I'm telling you, next time I go to, next time I go to stand, next time I do a stand up, I'm going to hire a fucking like 20 people there. Of course. Full stop, done, I don't care. Right, you know? Yeah, just to, just and to, just 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 so, I mean, that's actually a very important point because but you said like, if I burn my hand, then I, I just, I'm just going to stop, right? But the next level is not stopping is how do you turn pain into a new superpower? That's what I said. It's like, you have to, you have to really understand how not to go. You have, you have to really be determined not to go through that again. You know, just be, not to go through that again. I think every single thing that I felt in and stuff, I think that was actually what, I mean, I, I, mean, I mean, I can go into a lot more detail, but there will be a whole different podcast about how uh, a lot of failures, um, a lot of failures and stuff that happened to me um, in the past few years was actually extremely instrumental, you know, to me, right? You know, for Jupiter today, you know? And even today, I mean, I'm telling you, there's not, not everything is perfect with Jupiter. We have a lot of weaknesses, a lot of blind spots, a lot of things that we didn't do well in, right? You know, and then I think every day, I think, um, but I think for, for, I think back to whole, I think the main thing is this, right? Now, every time something happened in my team, uh, not great, right? I would actually publicize it to a team. I'll make it, I'll, I'll celebrate it. Okay, here's the funny thing, right? You might be hilarious, it might, it might be fun to you. We don't really, uh, I, I mean, when we hit a milestone or whatever, I don't really send a big message to the team saying congrats and stuff. I don't really do that. I just say, hey, good job, whatever, right? You know, whatever. But when something bad happens, it's where I really celebrate it. I, I, I turn into an event for celebration, right? I'm like, hey guys, yay, we fucked up. Yay, we, we lost in this, right? Now we're underdog again, high five. Now we can be a startup again, high five. It just happened recently, right? I'm like, let, 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 now, now it's great. Now we are, we're free from the burden of having to be the leader, mm. right? Let's just innovate again. Let's do stuff again, right? Mm. So I, I, I really, I, I think, I think the, 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 the reason for that is that I really, really think, right? That um, success is not um, created at the top, you know? Success is created at the bottom. I really believe that to the core of my soul. 
Yeah. So I, 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 I think it's very, very important for any um, aspiring investor or like trader or entrepreneur or like even young person and stuff to really learn how to thrive at the bottom. Yeah. You know, when you're, you're, when you're feeling the worst, like back, 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 back to a point, back to a stand-up example, right? I, I love that example because it's such a compact and powerful example, you know, of things. Um, after that, um, after that, I think the, 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 the determination I gained after that, right, um, really gave me a lot of, um, a, a lot of determination mm. to actually do better. Mm. Right. And I don't know how I would have gotten that um that uh that determination if I didn't actually fuck up that bad, you know? It's, it's, it's just like it's, it's just all those things that if you don't actually have a lot of pain, you would not actually uh have any more to do it, no? Yeah. Also, also bro, bro, think think about it. That is also ironically a healthier kind of motivation, right? Because their motivation is very internal. Absolutely. Right, whereas if you chase um like money, attention, status, power, it's very external. It's the same as a breakup. The Ooh, the healthy way to bouncing back to a breakup when you are the one being heartbroken is almost how do I work so hard on myself now, become so fit and so smart and so successful that the girl who broke my heart is gonna regret breaking up with me. You're bullshitting. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. That's what happened to me a year and a half ago. No, 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 bro. <laughs> I mean, like, why would anyone break out of you? No, 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 no. I don't believe you. <laughs> it check happened. Out start. Check out this start, bro. Actually happened a couple of times. <laughs> but that's subject for another conversation. I don't believe you. It's okay. <laughs> happened twice oh. in the last uh, 14 years. Really? Yeah. Oh, it's okay. Look but that's, that's when you learn the most. Look at you now. Look at you now. That's when you learn the most. Hey, bro. About yourself, about relationships, about... Everything, right? That's how I do it. This, yeah, for, for, for me, for, for me, it's when I fail. I, I feel like every time I fail and stuff, I think uh, it, it, it got seared so hard into me. I feel like every time I failed, I think some part, some part got like really burned to my psyche. You mm. know what I'm saying? You know, that I'm like, okay, I don't, do, I, I don't go through this again. None, never again. You know? Yeah. Do you think it's an ego thing? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. It's, it's, it's some weird thing because it's like, um, it's ego, but it's also, um, it's ego, but it's also, um, um, it's ego, but it's also um, how do I put it? Um, it hits funny. I think it goes way beyond the ego. You know, ego because I feel like it goes into like your very deep psyche. You know, mm. like yeah, uh, it's like ego is more like okay, I want to be something, right? Mm. It's like I don't want to be something mm. anymore. I'm saying, you know? right? Yeah. Like ego is like I want to be something. I think that goes deeper because I like, I don't want to be that person anymore. You know, I think that's more powerful. I think you know, yeah. You say you love bad decisions, right? And it's pretty much in the, in the topic. And you have a picture of yourself kissing the nose of a crocodile on your website <laughs> to represent your love for bad decisions. Why is it so important to come to terms with consistent bad decision making? Oh my God, this is a great question. Oh my God, this is such a great question. I mean, um, you know, I've been, it's really dumb, but I've been, I kiss a crocodile, I've been stomped by a deer, you know, I've been bitten by a snake. You know what I mean? And all none of those things were accidental. They were self-inflicted. You know I'm saying I don't, it's not advice. It's not advice. You probably should, you definitely shouldn't do all those things. You know, right? But I I have this, um, I have I do have this tendency to like go dangerously close to things I shouldn't get close to. You know? Um and uh, I, I and and, and I, I won't pretend to say there's any like a uh, psychology behind that, but I will say this thing. I think um when I feel like people are too caught up with making good decisions. The fundamental answer is very simple, right? I think people overestimate how well they are able to make good decisions. That's a crux, right? So um, basically, think about it. So basically, if you let go of the idea that you're able to make good decisions, by default, you go, okay, this, is, this might be a bad decision but it's more fun, it's more energetic, it's more creative, right? Let's, let's roll, right? And see what happens, right? And then you often, because of when, when, when our intellectual side overrides our um, spiritual and creative side, um, the things that we come up with, right? Become increasingly root, like ROT, mm. whatever, and, and, and routine and standardized. Mm. But whereas if we whereas if we um whereas if we can't embrace the um the um 
the other side of our brain that says, uh, this is my bad decision, but it's kind of, but it's more fun, it's more creative, it's more energetic. I think it's more likely to be different, right? And that's what alpha is, right? So that's what I'm saying. So don't take yourself too seriously in some sense. More, more concretely, that guys, the alpha is in bad decisions. The beta, okay, it's kind of the beta. <laughs> <laughs> very often the alpha is in what other people think is a bad decision and, if, like, and so if that- many people have told me that hey I don't understand uh, like I don't understand why you did ABC ABC for Jupiter right mm-hmm. but two years later oh I get it now mm-hmm. you know yeah so many yeah so many yeah. but the entire education system and professional world is built around risk mitigation and the fear of making wrong decisions how do we change this and make people proud of failing fast, failing often? We we shouldn't. We shouldn't. We we guys. We, why should we do that? We need we need people to run the trains to build uh, to. <laughs> I, I'm very I'm, I'm very I'm very serious here. I <laughs> I'm very serious here. I'm very fucking serious here. I mean, like, I do not believe in the whole bullshit about like how we need to turn the whole entire world into being creative and shit. No 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 no. no. Guys, please, if. Most people like me, the world is going to be fucked, not better. Fucked, right? You know, that's so fucked. Why? You know? Sorry? Why? Because you, you, actually need a, you actually need a mix of people, right? You, you need a mix of people. You, you need people who are very good at creating rules and following rules, mm-hmm. right? And, um, and, you need, and, and they are comfortable with rules, right? They actually want the rules, right? You, you also want people who are like, you know, crazy and like uh, innovative and like uh, willing to break the rules, right? Willing to break rules, right? And... This balance is a very important psychology a part of the ecosystem. Okay? And I do not actually believe or buy the whole theory that we should get people to break the rules and stuff. I think in something else funny, the funny thing is I think a lot of people who are like more comfortable staying within the rules, right? The funny thing is that they have this very they're so stressed out. They're like, oh, I'm supposed to break the rules and blah blah blah. Mm. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? You know what I'm saying? You know, and and I I'm serious, bruh. And then I, I so anyway, I, I, I guess what I'm saying here is this. I feel like uh, we should all just be comfortable, right? Who we are, you mm-hmm. know, I feel like, so instead of, uh, so instead of saying income won't be break rules, I'd be like, hey, um, you should just be comfortable about where you are along the spectrum, you know what I'm saying? You know, and not, yeah. um, like I, I can tell you, like a lot of things in, a lot of things that I do, I'm not kind of breaking rules, right? For example, I'm, I'm, I'm actually very, very conservative on many, many, many things. Right, in terms of like uh, in, in terms of the law and everything I'm very conservative on those mm. things mm. right I don't try to break the rules mm. right I don't mm. right you know what I'm saying you know and, and, and whereas some people they would be a lot more courageous in that sense right mm. so I think I think, I think, it's, I think there's actually a lot of pressure these days for you to be like someone you're not mm. right so I feel like it's actually really important just to be like hey you know what find, find your balance find where your comfort zone is and, and trust it trust mm. Trust your comfort level. Your your someone taught me to this again. I think, I think uh very very often I think I, when I, whenever I push someone to do things beyond comfort level, it always backfires. Right, and and from all those things that I learned that okay, you should never you should actually instead of pushing someone beyond their comfort zone, you should actually encourage someone to be the edge of their comfort zone. Right, you know, but not push them past it. Mm. You know, right. If they take, if they take a step, it's their step to take. Mm. You know, that's it. So. I will, I will say this thing. So the, I will say, okay, you know what? Find your comfort zone. Find the edge, right? If you want, take a step past it, right? But never, never, never feel compelled psychologically, emotionally, or physically for someone to push past it. Don't. Mm. Yeah, don't. Yeah. So figure out who you are and don't compare yourself to others because everyone is different, right? Yeah. And everyone has different things comfort. that make them happy. Yeah, and comfort zones and like, uh, like um, uh, happiness with rules. And, uh, yeah. It's not binary, right? It's not, I think the whole breaking rule is stupid, right? Because I am, there are certain things I'm very happy to break, right? For example, social norms, right? Like business strategy. Okay, I'll, I'll get an example, right? Now, there are a lot of social norms I'm happy to break, right? For example, like, uh, you know, like, uh, like, I'll give you a few, okay? Like business strategy, com- communication conventions, right? Uh, like how to launch things, how to launch projects, how to communicate, right? I'm saying, you know, like uh, relationships, right? Like relationship status. Those things like conventional relationship status, I'm happy to break those things, right? But the things that I don't break, you know, like, I mean, I don't go out topless on Orchard Road or like, or Tom Square, right? I'm saying, you know, right? Things like that. I, I, I don't wear a tonk, you know, I wear around, right? So 
I mean, and 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 I've I've never I, I don't I don't want to go to jail in general. Things like, so so <laughs> I'm actually very happy now not going to jail, right? So so there are a lot of things that I do that are like very 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 well within social norms, right? Whereas whereas I mean some people would happily you know so, whereas some people whereas some people are very very happily um you know go to someone else might very very happily right you know go go to a Times Square in a tonk. Right, you know, but be terrified. We say, hey, why do you launch something this way? Yeah. <laughs> right, you know, you know what I'm saying? So I think everyone breaks their own rules in some way. You know what I'm saying? Just, just find yourself, you know? Just find, find your edge. Yeah. So what you're saying is uh, that it's good that we don't have too many zero IQ, ADHD, tornado cats out there, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying that. I mean, if you are, if you, if that's your comfort zone, go for it. I'm saying, all right, but man, I, I do actually think it's a good thing there are not too many of me. Yeah, seriously, you know, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it. we need America, we need Switzerland, we need Singapore. We also need, you know, like I think, I think every country plays a role. Hmm? Mm. Yeah, that's how I think about it. You know, yeah. America would hate it if everyone was in America. They would hate it. Then they have no, then then they have no one to compare themselves against. You no, know? yeah. What is money? Energy. I um energy. Money is energy. I I came to that conclusion after many after many long times. You, you know how we you know how we always um you know how we were taught in school of money, right? We 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 first um like like you if you think of how we think money, right? As a person, right? We first think of our money as a thing you can buy things with, right? Mm-hmm. As a cash or whatever, you go to a store, you get in something, buy something, it's a million exchange, mm-hmm. right? And then you start, think, uh, you start thinking of your livelihood. You know, you start thinking of your livelihood. You start, like, and you go to school, you start learning about all kinds of like, theory of money, whereas a million exchange, a store of value and everything, right? And yeah, I think, um, but I think all this, uh, I think what is actually amazing about crypto is that it has shown us that money is energy. And anyone, that, anyone can create money, right? If you have the right kind of energy behind it, and the energy and a lot, a lot of things can make an energy, right? And the energy is actually largely made up of human energy. When you have a group of people who deeply believe in something, you know, and 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 able and able to kind of put the amount of like conviction and energy behind it and stuff, then you get then you're actually able to emerge money. Whereas um, whereas whereas um I I I I think that's actually one I, I think that's the main thing. Yeah, energy. What's your definition of energy? Human conviction. Like human conviction. Yeah. I, I, think, that's, I, think, I think that's how I think about it. You know, when, when you have a... Because for money to work, right? You really need a critical mass of humans to believe in it, to bet for it, to use it. Mm. Um, and rally behind it, right? That is actually the, the because because people keep trying to understand like people, because here's the thing, people keep trying to differentiate between gold and Bitcoin and USD and meme coins and DeFi coins and UT coins and Uni and Jupe and everything. Mm. Am I right? Mm. You know, right? However, I think one thing that we want to do right, is to get back to first principles, mm. right? And if you cut across, if you just drop all these things that people are saying, right? And you try to think of what, what is the thing that unifies like whether it's like Bitcoin or gold or US dollars or Jube or Uni, right? And any and anything that kind of or even with or Dogecoin or like Bong and stuff like 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 you know like 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 money thing like that have survived the like, that survived a long short term, it's always comes down to a group of people believing it, pushing it, owning it, holding it over a long period of time, promoting it over a long period of time. Right? That's what it is. Right, and that is energy. That's that's the main thing. Rest, rest. If we look at things that don't last, right? For example, so so many, right? So we we we, we mean coincidence now, right? Mm. We we any anyone can come together and get a lot of energy, right? You know, and pump something hundred million, right? And everyone gets very excited, right? But it's, but but the but the problem is that the energy disappears after a while, you know, because there's actually no real call, mm. right? And that goes away. Right, so just like the so just like the whole so the initial rush of energy created a very temporal form of money, mm. right? And then, and the, after hype is gone, the money goes away, you know. Yeah, but it's still money though. But here's the thing: it's still money though. I, I think another thing that's very important here, I, I want to push here, right? Is I want to push the idea that everything that's liquid, fungible, and exchangeable and stuff is money, mm. 
right? You know, I, th- I think I think too many people try to say, okay, like, you know, too many people go like, hey, all right, this is money, this is not money, right? So let me propose something interesting, okay? Let me just, let, let's, let's abolish all those notions. Anything that's fungible, exchangeable, and liquid is money. It can be a mean coin that just spun off for five minutes, you'll die five minutes later, right? That's money. Why? Because you can easily transfer and transmit and exchange it anywhere. That's money, mm. right? You know, it can be like gold or US dollar, that's also money. You know, mm. yeah. So I, I think so. I think so. I think that's actually important. Yeah, because otherwise you keep trying to come up with um, um, like you know, like uh, uh like uh, like a uh, 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 a lot of like random like arbitrary um uh guidelines. You know about this is money, this is not money. You know, money to be A or B or C. You know what I'm saying? No, no. Mm. Yeah, I think that's actually important. Yeah. So that's actually one major thing I want to do, right? For the idea of money. Yeah, I want to really um create what um what we call money literacy. You know how we, t- you know, you know how we talk about financial literacy mm-hmm. in school, right? You know? Um, I, I mean, actually, we don't even really learn it in school, financial literacy. I mean, we kind of learn, like, you know, save your money, interest rates, and like, you know, put your money in the bank, you know, everything, right? We do yeah. save your bank bank account, retire, you know, even to retire. If you, make X, if you make 5K a month, you should spend 3K, you know, all that kind of stuff, right? So they, they do actually go through that financial literacy with you, right? But it's actually based on the old system. You know, right? It's based on a, a system where there's one single company, you know, where you earn and where you earn and um so that that financiality is based on like like for example, think about it, when you're in school and stuff and you're learning when you're still a baby and stuff and you're in, in high school and stuff, do, do they say, hey, you know what, there's a world in finite cash of money, you know what I'm saying? You know? Right, what can you do with those things? They don't. They say, okay, here is the you have five Swiss francs, you have five Swiss francs. Yeah. You know, you have you earn X amount of Swiss francs a day, interest is blah. In Singapore, they don't go, they, they will go like in America, they go, oh, you earn dollars. You know what I'm saying? Mm. So all our financial literacy is based on the idea of them what being one money system. Mm. So in a new model I'm proposing, right, called money literacy, right? I would like the whole world to rethink money. You know, to imagine a world with like infinite numbers of money, amongst, not, not, not infinite money, infinite numbers of money, mm. right? And how would that world look like? What's their role in the world? You know, like how, do they, how do they contribute to money systems that they like? You know, how do they create new money themselves, right? How does all this money get used in the wider context with all the other, other, other monies, right? That, that, and and that, that's actually what I, what I really want to do. I, I, I want to create a new... Um, new kind of literacy and new kind of like um, framework for the help for the for purpose of understanding like you know um, a loss of money because think about it like um, can you build a car if you don't understand a lot of physics can you build an airplane you can't right you know so similarly similarly if the if the world didn't understand and it has to be important right if the world didn't understand loss of physics right can we build airplanes you know can we build big buildings we can't we couldn't Right. So similarly, if the world doesn't understand laws of money, right? Can we build the? Can we build a whole new financial system? You know, can we build a whole new financial? World? We can't. Right. Mm. So it's actually really important for us to build this, like you know, parallel. We always talk about this parallel, like you know, world. Right. You know. Right. We have to actually re-educate the world to rethink all the laws of money, and that has never been taught before. Never. Yeah. Why is it so much better to have an infinite um, amount of I mean, mean, infinite number of money. Kevin, do you like being in a prison or do you like walking around free? No, seriously, it's your question. Which one do you prefer? Obviously, I like, I like to walk around free. Do you think it's better that each, each and every country have their own, have the freedom, they have their own currency, you know? Versus like one central, one giant central um, nuclear welding forcing, you must use this currency, which, which is better? Crypto. Like, do you think it's better that people can actually start creating crypto, right? Our own money. What's better? Clearly, it's better, right? Mm. Now, that's it. So, so, so that is because fundamental, that's actually very important. It's actually really important to understand, right? Now, because the ability for anyone to create their own money and, and have their money be integrated into other kinds of, all kinds of money, right? It's freedom. It's the ultimate kind of freedom. Because it's about freedom. Just like how you wouldn't want, you wouldn't want one person, uh, you wouldn't want one person and stuff to actually detain, you know, what you can and cannot do and stuff. In this case, similar. You want to allow everybody in the world to have the, education, literacy, and freedom, and power to create own kind of money, yeah. So it's sort of a capitalism of money creation. And then the best form of money win, right? The one with Precisely. the most energy and the most 
attention precisely and then therefore the world becomes better because people need to compete for their own money to to be better precisely that's how it works right it's like and 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 that's the way it will work Mm. and and that's the way it will work we are headed to a world of billions of chains and billions of Mm. monies and everything right you know and 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 to to cater to this new world it will come right it will come right and then to cater to this new world we need we need we we really need to actually um like rethink the fundamental loss of money we're kind of seeing that already I mean, there's a, some people talking about social tokens, right? But now we have these meme coins and we have celebrities launching their own coins. Uh-huh. And there is a lot of criticism around that. But it's kind of what you're saying is they're basically launching their own money and trying to put energy and attention around that. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it cannot be criticized, ex- obviously, except if there's bad intention behind it. But that's what we're seeing now. I mean, I like, 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 honestly, I think this is something I talk about a lot in my, in my tweets and essays. I have this thing called PVP versus PPP. Right. So basically, I think um, I think um, it is up to the uh, fundamentally. I think this is I I strongly believe that if you have the in I, I strongly believe that if you have good intentions and the rich and everything and stuff, you should actually try to do something. You know what I'm saying? All kinds of stuff. I I timing wise, I don't know, but you should try, right? But the key thing is us as a community, mm-hmm. right? What kinds of behaviors do we accept? You know, if we accept that, if we happily accept that, um, if we a- happily accept bad behaviors, mm. right? Simply because, like, we, for example, if we happily accept projects that, um, you know, um, like allow um allow influencers to dump, right? Mm. Just to get a pump, right? If we happily allow, if we happily allow, if we happy, if we happily go, hey, you know what? Oh, you sh- uh, oh, this guy looks dubious, but he's famous, so let him, we will just let him do whatever he wants and stuff, right? Um, if we as an industry allow that, right, then whose fault is it? Mm-hmm. It's our fault. It's, it, 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 it's, kind of, it's kind of stupid because I feel like, it's kind of stupid because like, um, you know, it's like, if you are, if you are enabling, um, if you are enabling a, a bad behavior, right, um, like whose fault is it? Mm-hmm. Right, it's probably your fault. So, so, so I feel like what I think is important right now is not to criticize them you know, or, or anyone who does bad things, right? Mm-hmm. The critical thing here is to actually look at ourselves in the industry. What, are, what behaviors are we, uh, you know, approving of, enabling? It is very, very important, you know? It's very, very important because if you're, for example, your parent, right? Your parent stuff, it's like, if a, if a kid is shit, right? It, you should probably ask yourself what you're enabling. <laughs> of course. And I feel like it's very similar in this case. You know, if we, if we allow, um, if we allow people to get away with things just because they're famous or blah blah blah, it's always convenient. Then it's our fault. Full stop. You know. Yeah. And it's definitely one of the problems that we have in crypto since the beginning, right? One of the biggest critics of the crypto industry since pretty much forever is that it's an insider's game, and in that sense, it's not that different from traditional finance, which which we're trying to replace, right? So the classic uh-huh. mindset is. I need to get in early and dump on someone else who is late to the party and is my exit liquidity. The the awesome the awesome thing the awesome thing about this is that I think uh, if you look at the the really good projects, right? I think at some point they at some point in their life they they got out of that scope, right? You know they got they, they got over that hump, you know. Mm-hmm. And then um, whether it's Ethereum or Bitcoin or Solana, there was there was definitely a lot of like in all these projects there were definitely. Um, like uh, the, first of all, I think in all these projects, the call was amazing, right? Uh, Bitcoin had amazing call. Call group people who really fucking can, mm. right? Uh, Ethereum had group people who really fucking can as well, right? Solana had a really good people who really can as well. I mean, is Solana obviously, obviously as a? I mean, across all these three networks and stuff, there's obviously a lot of history, right? And history and characters and everything and stuff, right? But end of the day across all these things, there's actually an ecosystem of people that really, really just care for the project, mm. right? And I could really look past that. Um, I could really work for that, for that, you know? So I feel like, um, and, and similarly, I think, uh, so I think that's actually one thing that I think, um, but similarly, I think you have a lot of projects and stuff that don't have that quality, right? So I feel like, I think, so, so I feel like, um, I mean, so I feel like what's actually really important here is that as participants in the space, as investors, as builders in the space, we really work with um, teams and projects and stuff that really have proven that they really care about the project, they really care about the space, and they really care about each other. Mm. You know? Because what, if, we, if we just jump from project to project and stuff looking for the pump, 
then we end up with that. You know, we end up with that dynamic, you know, whereby 99% of the space is just all about the quick pump, you know? Yeah. It is. So let's, uh, let's talk about a few definitions here to make sure people understand, right? Uh -huh. PVP. Uh -huh. What's the main problem in this environment that we call PVP? Players versus players. Oh, it's, like, it's like the, the best example is Counter-Strike. Counter-Strike? Yeah. Have you, have you played Counter-Strike? I have. Yeah. Counter-Strike is, is a great game because like, it's PVP, right? right? It, the rules are simple, right? You know, I kill you, you kill me. Mm. Right? If I, it, it's all about like, who can get the shot in first at the right time and to kill someone, <laughs> right? That, that, that's a PVP game, right? And, and in, in some sense, in some sense, that's a, that, that unfortunately for many, 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 uh, like 99.9% .9 of the co comedy these days is that way, right? It's all about, okay, um, I know it's, it's a, a, there's a very big distrust going on in the community, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's between the users and investors and users and team or vice versa and stuff or something just like with the devs and everything, right? Whereby the community fundamentally distrust each other. They distrust the investor, they trust the devs, right? So everyone's a trigger alert, mm -hmm. right? On like everyone's, everyone's a trigger alert. Going like, okay, who is going to dump first? Let me, let me just, let me just, let me just like play the game off. Let me just play it along and stuff. But all my finger is always on the sell button, right? Because I do, I, it's always about trying to me dumping on you first, mm. right? So that, that, that's PVP, right? Uh, but how, but that's what we've been having until now. How did we go from zero to 2.5 trillion in market cap for crypto in a PVP environment? Yeah, because, because the, the ones that survived didn't, the, the ones that survived, right, led the way. You know, we didn't. I mean, like as I said before, I think one uh, one one thing one one thing that's really important here is to understand that like not all not all is that way, right? I mean, B B Bitcoin didn't become a Bitcoin didn't become a B Bitcoin didn't, Bitcoin didn't become a, a, a trillion dollar protocol, right? I'm saying by by that behavior, right? You know, Bitcoin became a trillion dollar protocol by having a really big network of people who built for the protocol, who invested in it, who evangelized it, who hodled it, and who tell the whole world about it. You know, mm. a PVP doesn't mean not selling, by the way, like like. Like selling and taking profit is a very healthy and normal cycle, right? Even speculation is very healthy, right? Because it drives, it, it creates price action, right? All very great. I mean, I run a <laughs> trading platform, <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, if there's no speculation, I'll, I'm dead. Full stop, right? You know, but it's a difference between um, um, trading something and uh, trying to and, and, and trying to win at the expense of other people. Mm. You know, there's a big, big, big difference, you know? Seriously, right? And, and and what you see is that you see in projects, right? That even even if, even they, even if they grew really really big, right? You know, I there many projects I can't I can't say the name, but they always die in the end, you know, right? When 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 the when the project doesn't when the project doesn't engender a very healthy um, dynamic between the team and the investors and the users and the communities, holding just dies over time. I'm not yeah. kidding. No yeah. harmony. Yeah, but that's no, yeah. no alignment, no alignment, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Hmm? So, so, so now, what is PPP? If you have to explain it to your mother. A garden. A garden. You know, a garden. A garden means that like a, a garden, uh, a garden. I think PPP is like garden. You know, it's like um, you, you start with some seeds and you have nothing but a, a, a patch of grass. You know, you have all the, you have all the, you have all the bad, you have all the nutrients in there. You have all the, everything's there. Mm. You know, right? The energy is there. We talk about energy, right? You know, the energy you have energy from the sun, you have everything and stuff. How do you grow it from nothing into a vibrant garden? Mm. You know, they can survive on, thrive on. And obviously people might need to eat the fruits now and then, right? They need to uh no seriously they do, right? They yeah. take the vegetables now and then, <laughs> trim the grass, trim the weed. But that that is what PPP is. You know what I'm saying? Right? That's what PPP is, you know? Like a PVP is like two person just fighting each other. You know, for the turf for the for the share of the land, and nothing ever grows because they're too busy fighting. Mm. You know, right? PPP is like let's grow this garden together because if this garden succeeds and stuff, I manage to make uh, and we have a great like we have a great balance between taking taking what we need, right, and replenishing it, right? You know, taking and we take a poop, right? You know, we put it back to the soil. You know, things like that. You know, right? And it's all about ecosystem, right? How do we create a healthy uh, ecosystem? You know, that, that's that's what I care about the most. Yeah, and, and I, I I really really think that um I really really think that um like projects that win are those that manage to engender this trust over the long long run. You know, yeah. 
Do you want to explain the concept of a finite and infinite game? Oh, this is such a good one. Um, um, I mean, is there a um, like uh, like P- PvP are finite games mm. for sure because PvP is where um, everyone tries to not be the last guy, right? Everyone wants the last guy to lose, you know? Everyone wants the last guy to be as in liquidity, right? That's a PvP game, right? Now, in, in the PvP game, obviously, there's, it's a finite game because there's, once the last guy is in, it's over, you know? In a PvP environment, where everyone is trying to make everything work and grow together, right? It's an infinite game. Think about it. Is there any limit to what Bitcoin could potentially be? No, nothing. Seriously, nothing. There's nothing, there's nothing stopping like, uh, there's nothing stopping Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, and hopefully Jupiter, right, you know, from becoming anything to be, you know? Because end of the day, because, because end of the day, we want the last guy, good communities, want the last guy that comes in, right? To have good time, you know, to win, to be successful, you know, to build a community, to make it. You know? How is that different from a public good? Or Sorry? should the goal for no. any of this system to become a sort of public good. No, fuck that. I mean, not, fuck that. I'm not into, I'm not into that shit. Uh, we're, we're, we're capitalists, baby. Uh, we're capitalists, <laughs> man. What are you talking about, bro? No, it's because, guys, the, the reason is very simple. I feel like it, it goes to loss of money, right? Because we're creating new money, mm-hmm. right? Because when you create, because again, we are, because again, we're creating new money, right? In a, in a new money system, um, when, the last guy, when the last guy makes it, right? Everyone wins together. Mm. It says, right? It, this is fiat in some sense is a PVP environment, you know, because you have X amount of dollars and stuff, and you're trying to, you're, you're PVP fund the thing is this fiat is fundamentally a PVP system, right? Because you have a fixed amount of, you have a, okay, let me take it. Fiat is fundamentally a PVP system because you have a fixed amount of fiat that gets distributed to the people, and everyone has to fight, you know, for their share of it. Mm. You know, and then even when there's new fiat being printed, it's not given, it's not distributed to the people per se. It's just it, the, the, this whole entire like centralized system, you know, for distributing that. So it's a PV system. However, crypto is fundamentally and can be said well as a PPP game. And there's a fundamental difference because we are creating new money for ourselves and benefit us. How is that different from a zero sum and positive sum game? It's no different. Same, right? It's the same thing. I think. I think the 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 we have to we have to get out. We have we have to build systems, um, that become like a, a more than a, more than what it could be. You know. Yeah. So that's beautiful in theory, but now if you add crypto cycles, which are really rough, right? Uh huh. Does it not make PPP game kind of an utopia? Because no, you're saying the last one wins, but like it, with these cycles that are crazy, where you have mega drawdowns, there is someone who maybe doesn't have a long term view enough will get wrecked, right? Even if the intentions initially are good in PP, the system. PPP doesn't, PPP doesn't mean that everyone wins. There's no such thing. I mean, we're not building utopia here. <laughs> we're, not being, we're not building a utopia here. We are building, it, it's quite factual. Um, PPP, PPP means that, PPP means that like uh, the, every, all participants, all participants, mm. right? Try their best, you know, to engender an environment where everyone wins. Mm. It's not about promising a certain like delusion whereby no one sells and no one doesn't win that way, you know? Mm. Um, and 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 you, by the way, you, you do see that by the way. By the way, PPP is a funny thing. PPP cultures are formed not in the not in the peak, but in the bear. Always, right? Mm. Now, when uh, whenever there's a in fact whenever whenever there's a pump, right, then actually all the, the all the PVP people come in. Mm. And when there's a downturn, right, the PPP people stay. Absolutely. You see what I'm saying? Absolutely. You see what I'm saying, right? Yeah. So you see what I'm saying and stuff, right? Like I tell one thing. And there's not many left, huh? No, many I, 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 it's not many. Like. I have a lot of examples of this thing, uh, mainly from Ethereum and Solana, mm. right? I mean, I can tell one thing: it's like, uh, like the 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 success of all these like communities were not from the pump, mm. you know, were from a downturn, right? It was from the pump, and dumped. Everyone left, and then the people go, oh, let's go. There's this really strong group that formed, and those are the PPP ones, you know. Yeah. How do we shift the entire industry from a PVP to a PPP mindset? First of all, we got to be very comfortable with failure, right? With downturns, yeah, it's important. Like I think uh, we got to be very comfortable with like downturns and red candles, um, and realize that without those, without those red candles and stuff, we will never actually um find out who is PPP and who is PPP, mm. 
right? It's in those downturns that we find um, the, the goal, if you may, right? That's, that's the first thing. The second thing is that we, we as an industry have to stop um, um, being accepting of behaviors that are clearly adversarial. Like for example, like, you know, giving influence a ton of tokens, uh, even, and we don't care to dump on us, right? And then, or, or for example, like, you know, having a ton of tokens that are intransparent and we sell on the site, um, and then, uh, and you know, so and so forth. Right? I think we need to stop just, we need to stop accepting these behaviors just because they pump us all, for example, accepting uh, poisonous characters into the game, right? You know, uh, just because they pump our backs, right? You know, so I think, I think, um, I think, uh, unfortunately, I think our industry is very, very, very um, 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 scared of downturns, you know? So, um, and it's what we were saying earlier, right? It's like, if you have like, you know, very high expectations, then, uh, you know, then you have low resilience, right? You know, so I think it's very important for us to have like much, um, uh, much higher resilience. Uh, and secondly, I think be less accepting of bad behaviors, and then uh, and also like you know not accept people just because they give us a, a temporary pump. Yeah, you have a super interesting analogy for resilience. Uh huh. Redwoods. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Why should founders study closely the redwoods of the Sequoia National Park? Oh, I love this example. Um. So a lot of people ask me like uh, who my role models are, right? And I, and then they were expecting me, me to say someone famous, right? Or like old school or classic, you know? And I always say this, I always say that my my role model is like those giant redwood trees in the in the California park, right? Mm. Because I, I, if you go to California, there's this Sequoia National Park, you see these like redwood trees. They're fucking, they're fucking huge, right? And, you can, and then they're this, you can even go inside of them, right? And then they've been there, they've been there forever, right? And the the and, and the reason why they are my um the and the, and the reason why they are my role model is quite simple. It's because um so um every um so the the way the way it works is that every few every few decades right or every few whatever there'll be a big fire right that engulfs the whole forest, and then so fires are usually seen as being bad for the trees right you know but in in this case it's great for the it's great for the river trees why. Firstly, they they clear away all the bugs, all right? So all the all the all the all the pesticides and all the bugs that kill the fire, right? Second of all, the the weeds go away, right? So there's less to compete with them, like you know, for the for the nutrients on the ground, mm -hmm. right? And thirdly, the foliage and stuff is all cleared up as well, all burned away, right? So more sun, no, so more energy can shine through to them, right? Mm -hmm. And this this exactly the same in crypto. Right, as second in crypto, by every few years or even every few months these days, <laughs> right? You know, there'll be, there'll be a big, um, a, a big like fire that just comes in, right? And then we are usually so scared of the fire. You go, oh my god, red candles, oh my god, but but we should learn the wow. Okay, this is actually pretty good, right? I mean, think about it. The last fire that happened, right, swept away a ton of bad characters in the space, mm. right? I mean, Absolutely. can you imagine us today if those bad characters are still around? You really can't. Right, you know, so so in, in some sense, I think that's great because I think that number one, redwood trees teach us not to be scared mm. <laughs> of fires. Yeah, right, because they can be really, really great. Now, but question comes, but I think it's very simple, right? How do you survive a fire? You know, right? How do you become a redwood tree? You know, what I'm saying, and not survive the fire because I mean, you can say, I mean, you can say, oh, you can say, oh, you want about blah 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 being great, but what if you die in the fire? Right, you're over, right? So, um. The second thing, how do you not die in the fire? You know, three things. How, how, how does real trees not die in the fire? Right, three things. Number one, not, not number one, there's a lot of resin, R-E-S-I-N, in their in the material. So what, what does it mean that it's fire resistant? So that, that, that gives their, um, their, their whole trunk a certain level of fire resistance so it doesn't get burned so easily. Mm. Right? Secondly, they have more, a, a lot more liquid. They store a lot more liquid. Get it? Liquidity, mm -hmm. right? So it's still a lot of liquid and stuff, so it's more likely to kind of survive the, the, the let, let, let's say they'll be burnt, right? And then they're big enough, right? So they can still withstand, they can withstand the fires that people can't withstand. So I'm like, and, and to me, I love that. I fucking love that because it's like, it's like, it, it just describes like really well the, the core ideas that you need, right? Number one, you, you must make sure that you operate in a way where you're fire resistant, you're, you're downturn resistant. Right, you know, and uh, and 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 secondly, you 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 need to make sure that you have a certain amount of like attention or brand presence. You know, saying such that you you and 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 then the, the ecosystem needs you in a certain way, mm. so that even when you have temporary setbacks, you won't you won't die. Right, and thirdly, you need to have liquidity, literally liquidity. 
right? And then they, I mean, like, like strong capital flows and everything and stuff so that, you know, you can survive whatever comes to, comes to hell, right? Yeah. So I feel like that's actually, to me, it's almost like a perfect, like, analogy, you know, for how to, like, for what a project or team should be doing or even investor should be doing. Mm. You know what I'm saying, you know, like in the, in the cycle. So I think, I think, so I think all said and done, right? And last of, la- lastly, lastly, so firstly, not to, don't be afraid of five years, right? Because it can be really good for you if you survive it, right? Once you survive it. And secondly, it's like, I think uh, you also taught me like, uh, what are the key qualities you need, you know, to survive, you know? And thirdly, and the most, one, and thirdly, and most importantly, I think um, they, um, they teach me to be, um, they, they, they teach me that like, um, like to be resilient, you know? It's like, so every, every time I, um, every time I think of a, 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 a setback or if I didn't do that well in something or I fall behind something or someone has better product or I get a really bad tweet, mm-hmm. I think it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. You know, just be a real tree. You know what I'm saying? You know, and 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 it, it, this too shall pass. Mm. You know, yeah. So that's it. That, that's why railroad trees are my um, role model. I really, really think that beyond any, um, beyond any, like uh, you know, um, any temporary person who lived for like who is successful in business for like thirty years or whatever. I mean, these fuckers they live for thousands of years, man. There's something there, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you talk a lot about. Resilience, right? Yeah, and yeah, high yeah, expectations. Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Yes. And one of the things that uh, is really interesting is uh, something that you developed a philosophy of zero expectation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Call it zero, right? Zero, zero. Zero, zero expectations, zero. zero promises, and zero ego. Just yeah. pure zero IQ zero. participation, crypto retardation in its purest form. Zero culture is the much needed counterculture to the moon only culture that's pervasive throughout crypto, a culture that thrives regardless of green candles in hand or red candles in the ass. Yes. Why is, was it so important for the future of our industry to embrace the zero culture? Again, I, I don't think everyone should embrace it, but I think you should embrace it, right? You know, you being whoever is listening. <laughs> um, you, know, um, you know how we talked about like, the clip earlier about like high expectations is low resi- resistance, right? And who has the craziest fucking expectation of all? Moon boys. You know, moon boys, right? They, they go into every like uh, they, they 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 go into every every channel, every chat, every Telegram group. They say, oh, this shit is going to 10 one billion, blah blah blah, right? I mean, I get it. They they say it because they want to feel good about the project and everything, right? They want to they want everyone to have high, high morale and stuff. But I don't actually think um that helps. Mm-hmm. I don't think it helps, right? I think what actually because I think that that kind of like um that kind of culture of like trying to make everything moon. Um, you know, creates expectations. And then the moment those expectations are not met, right, you know, um, they, 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 uh, they, then, then the heart gets broken and the resilience gets broken, mm-hmm. right? Um, which, is why, which is why I think uh, for me and stuff, I think it's very important for me, right, to really push the idea of like zero promises. I mean, I really don't make promises. You know what I'm saying, no? I, the, the, only thing that, the only thing I promise is that we're going to try our best, and we're going to have fun, and we're going to do together as a community, right? So th- those are things that those are things that are beyond that I don't promise anything, mm. right? And also zero expectations. I think internally and stuff I don't have any expectations. You know, I just do. And I think doing that is actually very important because um I think I think I actually I, I genuinely think that the industry will be better, right? You know, if all of us like stop creating an expectation that okay everything's gonna moon everything's gonna moon and stuff, right? You know, I think I think God, I really think that um that really sets us up for a lot of disappointment and failure. And yeah, I, I think it's very important. And also as individuals, as, as also, also investors, right? You know how um, we always talk about how the best time to buy is on the high and the best time to buy is actually, so that you should best really like, you know, most people buy the top and sell the yeah, bottom, right? Yeah. Which you should do the way around. Buy low, sell high. Yeah, but much harder to do. Yeah. And, and the reason is simple, right? But the, interestingly, right? If you embrace a zero mindset, right? You, you might actually make it, you might actually find it easier you know, for you to actually, uh, you know, um, execute on that, mm. you know, because when things are high, you don't go, oh my God, it's going to move even higher. Yeah. Then you, you, you take the profits you need, right? And then, um, and, and, then, and, then, and, and, then, and then when it goes low, you go, ah, oh, I'm going to die. You have, okay, you just be stoic. I believe in this thing. Mm. I, I, I'm going to go in thing without any, with zero promises. And then you go in too, you know? Yeah. So I, I, think, I think similarly, so one thing I'll say is this, right? Is that certainly, I think that's helped me a lot. I think uh, when uh, when Jupiter was started, Jupiter was really started at the bottom. You know, I think really at the bottom, right? When everything was a shit. You know, when when we started, we said, okay, let us 
like double down, you know, on building on building the best thing we can. Mm. That was like not worry too much about volumes. And there was like one whole year where my volumes was total shit. Mm. We just didn't think about it. We just go execute, you know? Yeah. Button. Moon boys, right? What what are they seeking? What are the what is the moon boy seeking? Oh, um certainty. Certainty? Certainty, dreams and hopes and stuff, yeah. And attention. Right? Oh, Most of them they're just playing the game of attention. Right. And the reason I'm talking about that is because you said, I mean, you are very good at the attention game, right? But you wrote attention is the most powerful thing in the world. Use it well, you can change the world. Correct. Use it negligently, you can waste your life. Use it poorly, you will steer into abyss. Use it badly, you can fuck up everyone. You can fuck everyone up. Moon boys, right? Can you develop on that? Sure. I think I think it's not well, Mumbai's per se when, when I wrote that. You know, um, you can, for example, I mean, think about it, right? It's like, who 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 were the best um, attention players in the last cycle? SBF, mm. Dokuan, Shuju, all these guys, right? You know, they were the best attention players, right? And then, uh, but I, I, I don't actually think they used their attention in a, in a very responsible way. Mm. You know, and I think that, that, that created a lot of pain, you know, for everybody, right? So they, 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 they got everyone... Um, um, I mean, who can who can who can forget all those like uh, tweets where they basically promise the moon in their own way, right? You know, uh, some promise the super cycle, some promise a, a magic a magic fiat system that can generate infinite twenty percent mm -hmm. growth, right? You know, um, some some uh, some promise that crypto is gonna be you know the 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 it save the world immediately if you give you just give it all to him, you know, <laughs> right? So I I I I I feel I feel like all of them like used the all of them were able to kind of like a used attention uh in a very powerful way to capture um to kind of like you know get the value to help people and do that you know I I feel it's, but obviously didn't turn out too well right you know um yeah so so that that is so that's what I think as as now I think uh, as now I think what what's actually really important so I think what's actually really important is kind of be able to you be able to um use the attention. Um, harness it effectively, you know, uh, and not to ruin. And, and and that's the reason why I think zero is a very important mindset, right? You know, like how do you how do you kind of like rally attention without promising the moon? Mm. Get it? Yeah, that's what I think is very important for me. Anyway, I think, I think that's what I try to do. I, I I try to do that a lot. I think, I think for me, my main thing is this, right? It's like, uh, how do I get the attention I need, um, for what I want to do, right? You know what I'm saying? You know, but not promising the moon. But it's much easier to get the attention when you promise the moon, which well, is yeah. the dream of everyone, right? Yeah, 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 uh, yeah. But then uh, that's also easy, right? You know, like, um, you know, uh, I am, we don't do easy things here, you know? It's too easy, man. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not even fun. It's too easy. You know, okay, 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 think, think, think. okay, think about it, think about it. Now, imagine basketball, right? 5v0. You have five fucking people on the court, right? Your opponent is zero. You know, no one, no one on the court. 5v0. Is that fun? It's not fucking fun, man. You know, so it's like, and you get bored after a while, right? That, that, that is kind of what moon, promising moons are like, you know, right? It's just like not fun, you know? it's just not, not fun, everything. And it doesn't last because you get bored of the game, you know? Yeah. So I think, I think what's, what's actually a lot more interesting is that can you build attention? Can you, um, can you rally people without promising the moon? Much more interesting. Hmm? Do you think we learned from last cycle? Every cycle we learn a little bit. Just a little bit. You know, I think last cycle, what you see is that this cycle is that there's way more decentralized activity. Mm. Ah, am I right? Mm. There's way more decentralized activity, right? A lot more activity happening in cycle is actually on decentralized networks. You know I mean, obviously the majority of the trading is still happening on centralized networks, right? You know, but I think one thing, one thing, one thing that you see is that there's actually a lot more, um, a lot more awareness um, that, uh, that, uh, like you, 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 you shouldn't like center to like you know like when when someone owns a massive amount of funds and stuff that is is a problem you know mm -hmm. so you see you definitely see a much higher level of like attention around like um like a, a number of things like custodies and like rap assets and everything and stuff and 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 proof of custody proof of assets and everything yeah so you do definitely see that but other things mm, kind of yeah we all but the the way I think about it is that we are like a we the our industry is like a really rebellious kid you know who will learn their lessons, but slowly and slowly and slowly. It'll be many, 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 um, like it'll be many, many, many uh, evolutions before our industry, you know, gets to where it wants to be. Yeah. But we learn. We definitely learn. Yeah. One of the best ways to grab people's attention in a world where attention is so scarce. 
Actually, but, but I, actually, sorry. So one one thing to add on to an earlier point, right? Mm. Is that that's actually that, that's that's actually why I think uh the the current cycle is um uh, a lot more uneven and a lot less um you know like a lot a lot, a lot less like uh, straightforward than people people want it to be. It's because I think we the world is still like scarring you know from the previous cycle mm. you know. And they are still like hesitant to really go all in, you know. I think I, 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 I think that's the reason why. Um, I I I I think I think that's the reason why I think um you know like this cycle looks a bit different from other cycles, you know. Yeah, you you, you see a lot of like smaller marketing getting you see a lot of smaller market tokens getting traction, mm-hmm. you know. Um, but then you you see and a lot of activity on those ends, you know. But you really haven't seen the same kind of like um massive movement in terms of the, the large caps. Yeah. Where do you think it's gonna come from? Do you think people are too traumatized from last cycle? Oh yeah, for sure, hundred percent, hundred percent. I still think so. Yeah. How do we help soothe the pain and get P-P-P. more people in? PPP. I'm not I'm kidding. I'm, I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty serious about this. I really think that if the world, if if in if the mainstream and the regular people starts to see crypto not as a PVP game. Right, you know, where everyone's just out here to just scam their shit. Mm-hmm. Right. I'm I'm fucking serious, man. Like, guys, I mean, like did, 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 I mean, if you want, I mean, just, just, just get just, just get real for a moment, right? Now, we um I mean the, the PPP thing is not it's not a, a, it's not a, 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 a utopian, it, it's not a utopian, like you know, socialistic bullshit, man. It's like if you want the retail to eventually pump your backs, right? You know, right? And you convince them that well, crypto is not full of shit. Yeah, of course. I'm serious. So, so, so when when I say PPP, people think that I'm referring to some like utopian like bullshit. No, it's not. It's actually very concrete, right? You know, if you want if you want people to come in and pump your bags and stuff, you better pump their bags first. You know, right? It, but uh, but I think uh, if, if we if we if we if we if there's this like overwhelming perception of crypto at the PVP environment, I think it's very very hard. You know, mm. to pump our bags. Yeah, very hard. Yeah, long term wise anyway. You know, yeah. One of the best ways to grab people's attention in a world where attention is so scarce is memes. Uh huh. And now we have financialized memes with meme coins. Why do you call meme coins the purest, the purest form of money? First of all, I want to say something. I think all coins are meme coins. All coins are <coughs> meme coins. Like I said this thing, Go is a meme. Bitcoin is a meme. USD is a meme, right? Jupe aspires to be a meme as great as all these OG memes, mm. you know? <coughs> Why? And, 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 and Why do you say that every coin or every... Money because ultimately, meme. because ultimately, what's a meme? A meme is something that uh, a what was that's good. A meme, right? A meme is something that everyone agrees on mm. and understands and agrees on, right? That's a meme, right? Every religion, every religion is a meme. Right? I mean, we we don't have to get religious here, okay? But we can all agree. We, no, no, no. JP said the same as you yesterday. Every religion is a meme. Like he went into like absolutely, and then he was like, I don't want to get uh, people angry, but it's true. Like, like people who we, understand. You know, it, we don't even have to get angry. It's, it's a fact, yeah. right? Like, it's a fact that every Christian needs to fucking believe that, like, you know, Jesus Christ is like that on the cross. If you don't believe that idea and stuff, you're not a Christian. Yeah. Not a real Christian anyway, right? So you have to really believe that shit, yeah. right? You know, right? They just say shit, oh shit, am I? Uh, but, 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 but it doesn't matter if you are, if you are like, it, it, that, that's the definition of being a Christian, right? You have to, and whatever you call it, you can call it a fact. You can call it, it's it's a meme end of the day, hmm. right? It's like where a critical mass of people all believe in something, right? Big uh, and and same thing, right? Okay, we all believe that you know gold has value. There's nothing interesting. There's nothing intrinsically valuable about gold, hmm. right? Because but we all believe that gold has value, right? We all can we all buy we all buy gold we all sell gold we all store gold, right? I'm saying you know? and, and why? Because we also believe in the in the fundamental meme. So the fundamental meme of gold is that okay, you can't create new gold, you know. Makes sense, but of course, once that fundamental meme is broken, what happens? If someone, if for example, alch- some alchemist, boom, can you go? Yeah. If someone finds a, a, a duck, a goose that lays golden eggs, that meme is over, right? And that fundamental thing is over, then go will just lose it because lo- go had lost its fundamental meme, mm. right? Mm. You know, so same thing with Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin's fundamental meme is that it has a store of value, you know. So as long as you have enough of people who believe in that, right? You know, in that notion, and so Bitcoin will always be money. Mm. You know, right? Same thing as every same thing as all the so every 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 system same as your dollars, right? You know, right? Um, the, I mean, I, I don't I don't go there, but you know, uh, the US dollar is similarly held by a similar meme, right? That the US dollar would be it's like the the most liquid and the most powerful and the most like uh and and the most uh most uh stock media exchange, you know, right? And it will always be the case because um you know you have this like you know the 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 the, the power the mm. entire mm. power 
of the US government and everything backing it up. You know, yeah. So I think that that's a US dollar meme, right? So I think every every um every coin is backed by a meme, mm. right? And then I think uh, so so it's actually really important for you, uh, for anyone to kind of understand that, yeah. And 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 I think that is actually why I think uh um oh I think every coin is a meme coin. Think about it because 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 every coin and every dollar and every money system is backed by a certain fundamental meme. Mm. That's why every coin is a meme coin. People, people like to over. Uh, I'll give a simple example, right? About that, people talk. People like to differentiate between meme coins and utility coins, right? I mean, which is I I call complete bullshit. That now, that this is in fact the utility contributes to the meme, not the other way around, right? Now, guys, uh, now how many people do you think buy so, right? You know, for the purpose of using it, right? You know, if you only buy so for the purpose of using it and stuff, trust me, so will be like I don't know. Very little. Very little, of course. Of a, yeah. It's in the Ethereum, right? No, no, that's not the case. But, but the utility of Soul, right, contributes to the meme mm. of Soul. Get you know what I'm saying? Right. So ultimately, everything that we do, whether it's like everything we do as a community and stuff, everything we do and stuff, is to contribute to the meme. So at the heart of the currency, it's not utility. It's the meme. You know? You build culture, contribute meme. Right, you know? Everything. I mean, so at the end of the day, every currency, every token, every money system, is all about finding that fundamental meme, you know, and really, really like enhancing that fundamental meme. So that's what I deeply believe in. Yeah, that's a key point actually for a lot of founders joining the space, right? Who don't understand that they say, "Ah, oh, but look, we have this TVL or we have this utility or we're doing this thing that's better than the other. Why is this worth more?" And actually, we had this conversation you and me with Raul Pal, mm -hmm. where he asked you, "How does a protocol that's worth ten billion dollar keep its value over time?" Right? Yeah. And you answered that the fundamentals was just giving a non-zero value, and all the premium on the top was basically attention, right? Or the, the meme you're talking about, right? The meme, it's, it's more about reinforcing, reinforcing the meme, right? It's like good currencies, like I guess, it's like good currency, right? More and more and more people, I just think, I, I love Bitcoin as an example, right? Because I, I, I think a lot of people get triggered when I call Bitcoin a meme coin. Mm. I love that. I love triggering people, you know? Right? Um, but, <laughs> nah, I'm just joking. Uh, I'm just joking. Uh, but, but I'm not, not joking. I don't know. But anyway, I think, I think, um, I think, I think, think about it, right? It's like the fundamental, what, what's the fundamental meme of Bitcoin? You know? Is that, it's a store of value, mm. right? Make sense? Yeah. That's a fundamental yeah. meme, yeah. right? The, funda the fundamental meme of Bitcoin is a store of value that is a better store of value than, 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 than gold or USD and everything, right? Mm -hmm. That's a fundamental meme. So, so how does Bitcoin store its value? How does Bitcoin as a trillion dollar protocol, mm. right? You know, like it's actually extremely simple. More and more and more people must believe that fundamental meme over time. Mm. That's it. That's so it. Stop. Over. Done. That, 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 that's, that's why Michael said it's so good, you see. Michael Saylor just fucking stuck to his guns, man. Threw ups and downs and everything, right? He yeah. became, the guy earned his fucking stripes, man. Absolutely. Bro, I'm telling Absolutely. you. Absolutely. So, so similarly, right? I think sim so similarly, I think similarly for, I mean, Go is actually amazing, right? Because like, um, you know, I think, uh, I, I, I think, you know, like governments or every, every time, every time a government stopped how Go, right? Demanded Go, right? Wanted to, wanted Go and stuff, that, that, that meme grew, mm. you know? That's it. So every single money system must have a fundamental meme. Mm. And mm. that meme and the, the way the value remains or grow is a more and more and more people converse to that meme. It's like religion, bro. Yeah. You know, right? Yeah. That's a key learning actually. Probably for a lot of people. It's the fundamentals you said contribute to the meme, but are like just a, a basic part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, so, so. and it's so important. And you gave an example of uh, Louis Vuitton bag, right? Do you want to explain I, I, that? Actually, like, let, let, let's take a little more fun. Fuck, 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 Alvi. Let us take something more fun. <laughs> uh, fuck it, let's just go in. Let's go in, man. Let's go in. Since you're here, fuck it, let's just go in. Let's talk about Jesus Christ, okay? Let's talk, <laughs> let's talk about Jesus no, Christ. No, no, really serious. Uh, fuck it. I, I said, let's go in. Uh, fuck it. Um, all right. Now, remember how we talked about earlier about how like the, the fundamental meme, the fundamental meme of Christianity, right? Is that Jesus died for you, right? You know, and everything that, so everything that, everything that, everything, everything that, think about it. Every single thing is built around that fundamental meme. You write books, you create stories, you create endless stories for why that's the case. Mm. To justify that, right? You go to, you go to, you sing songs. And every single fucking song, right, is about God loves you, right? And then Jesus has a cross for you, 
and blah, blah, blah. You read the whole Bible, you read everything. So everything is cons- and you go to church, right? And the community, right? The community all relates around thing, right? Makes sense? So what you're, really, what, 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 what you're really doing, right? Is you're creating the full stack, you know, of like narrative, community, mm. culture, mm. songs, commercial, blah, 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 right? To help that fundamental meme, you know? That's a fundamental meme, okay? That's actually really, really, really important. You know, right? They're really, really important, and 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 and, and that's what I think it's all about, right? So I th- I think I actually, actually think that successful projects, whether it's again whether it's Ethereum, Bitcoin, hopefully Jupe, you know, Jupe Jupe is a bit too young right now to kind of say things, you know. But certainly, I think the whole point here for us is to really understand that, like um, you know, like um, that every uh, every token that's fundamental meme, and, and give me like you know some some tokens the fundamental some tokens the fundamental meme is like utility, right? You know, and okay, it's great. Like it's great. I mean, okay, it's good for you, right? And then, but it's uh, it, it's just your. There's just one part of it, mm. right? I mean, like so. So some tokens, your fundamental game is utility. Okay, great. You know, uh, cool. That that that's your meme. I mean, I wanted to ask that because if we take uh, Bitcoin is a good example, but it's kind of like commonly accepted now and growing. Litecoin was a good example because Litecoin became really big because it was the silver, right? Uh, the silver to gold, yeah. but was not doing anything, right? Uh-huh. So it shows that, and then some other p- protocol could come and say, yeah, but me, I'm doing something useful for the space and I have fundamentals and I have TVL, but like, look, they had a better meme. Therefore, more people bought. And even myself, when I was 2017 buying some coins, I bought Litecoin because it was the silver of gold, right? The, the silver of Bitcoin, or the silver of crypto. I feel like that's so, actually, sorry, go on, sorry. Go on. So, so, so the problem with that is how does the space move forward if people focus more on the meme than on the actual utility and advancement of the financial system, right? Because at the end of the day, you need to have something that is improving what we're using today. The, the, biggest, fucking, the, 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 the biggest fucking delusion that, that the, the biggest fucking delusion that people have is that they have this fucking delusion that's one or the other. You know, Both, or like exactly. utility, utility yeah. or meme. Come yeah. on, bro, give me a fucking break, man. Yeah. It's like, sorry, can I swear? It's like, why, why do you think, like, like, like why do you think, uh, like, like think, think, things, the best things work, right? You know, when, when, the, when they enhance each other, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, 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 for example, do you think, do you think, if, okay, put it in, that's Christianity, right? Do you think, do you think if it's just one person going around and talking about meme and stuff would work if there wasn't this entire system of churches, of, of, of churches, of sermons, of songs and books and everything supporting, you know, that meme? Mm. It wouldn't work, you know? You actually need all that utility to support that meme. Mm. Full stop, done, over. You need that, right? So very similar right now. But again, do you think without that meme, people would just gather randomly to do shit? They won't do that, right? You need that. You need a central unifying thing, mm-hmm. right? You know what I'm saying? For people to kind of like gather and and, 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 and and do stuff, right? No. So it's exact same thing, right? You know, for say Ethereum, right? Like, oh, like yes, the you 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 need Ethereum as a symbol, as a logo, as the as the meme, right? As the world work on with the meme, right? You know what I'm saying? To to keep on to unify people and add value and, and, mm-hmm. and the meme mm-hmm. forward. But you don't need everything else. You need a community, you need adcon, you need devcon, you need the ERC 20s, you need all that kind of activity, right? I'm saying mm-hmm. to do that. And it's complementary. But again, if you take that middle thing out, if Ethereum didn't grow in value as, as a meme and stuff, would people do anything? None. Zero. Zero. Nothing happened. So Swana, true. same thing, right? Drew, same thing as well, right? So in many, many ways, right? It's a virtuous cycle, bro, right? You have the meme that unifies. Right, you know, and that creates whatever your thing is. Can be co- can be culture, can be community, can be utility. Right, I'm saying can be usage, can be people using it. Whatever your fucking thing is, I don't fucking care. Right, and that helps the meme. Right, so good systems create a virtuous cycle. Mm. You know, and that but that utility can be anything, but it can be culture, can be art, can be um, can be songs, can be community. I don't care. Right, which when you take a very very liberal view of utility. Anything can be utility. Whatever makes someone happy is utility. Yeah. And if you ever, if someone ever feels like, oh no, if you make someone happy, it's not, if you make someone happy, it's not utility, it's not worth nothing. Have you gone to a strip club or anything? People pay a lot of money, you know, to be happy. Bro, I'm telling you, right? If you ever, 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 ever question that, you know, feeling happy or feeling proud or feeling like, uh, even like feeling alpha, it's, a, it's not utility, bro. I mean, check, check people spend, man. Seriously, you know, right? In our modern society, the amount of people, the amount of money that, even like amount of money that people spend for bare necessities is like ten percent. You know, Kevin, how much do you spend a month on things that you actually need? 
It's like if you cut your rent, if you cut your food, do things you absolutely need. I bet you spend like 5% of what you spend. Now, you really need, mm. right? So everything we spend beyond what we absolutely need, mm. right? You know, it's like, that's the real thing. That's, we, we don't need those things, mm. you know? That's it. That, 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 that's how society works. So but fundamentally, two things, okay? The mean and the utility. And you take me anything. Mm. That makes me happy, you know? That's it, you know? Mm. Yeah. And it's a, it's a virtuous cycle, you know, that makes crypto, that, that makes any money system grow, you know? Yeah. Or even religion, community, everything grows and stuff. Very important. Yeah. You're now running your own meme coin experiment. Why? Um, well, no, I mean, I, I run many meme coins experiments, right? You know, I think I accidentally started a meme coin. I accidentally started a meme coin experiment where I did, when I... Uh, launched a test token and people were like, hey, let's make it a token. Then then I then I then then mock juke, then mock juke was created, mm -hmm. which led to the whole zero, uh, which led to the whole zero culture. You know, because like I I I I I was like, I was like, hey, you know what? And I was like, okay, I'll I'll make it a I'll make it a token if you guys yeah, I'll 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 make it a token, I'll burn the I'll burn the supply and make it a token if you want to, right? You know, but if you want to bury your whole way, you should shut the fuck up to zero. Right, you know, I created a white paper that's basically zero. You know, so you check out check check out module white paper. It's the best white paper. It's zero. You know, um, yeah. And then the then the whole thing was born, right? So so we are just meme called zero now, right? You know, and then I wanted to test our launchpad, so I I was like I I I created I asked people, hey, you know what what like hey you know what like uh, do, do you guys uh, like what like, what do you guys think if we create if we tested the meme coin launchpad, you know, with a meme coin? Mm. I was like, then people said, yeah, why not? Then I said, okay, let's go. So I then they went, then went then then I found and then there was a team that was that then I there was a team that really wanted to to build it with me, to launch to build maintain it. So let's go. You know, and it is it's still one of the best cat coins around, you know? Uh and then uh yeah, I think um so um so I, I, I think I think for me it's not about launching min coins. I think I don't really launch min coins myself. You know, I think I help them be launched. Mm. Yeah, I, I think because I, I don't know, I think it's much fun. I think min, 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 I, I feel like it's very, very hard for me to um, really understand how things work, you know, if I'm not part of the process. In it, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think, yeah, so I think that, 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 that's, what, that's what I really enjoy. Because ultimately, I'm, ultimately I'm a builder, right? Meme coins are the narrative of the cycle. Everyone throws the word narrative around in crypto, right? Narrative this, narrative that. Gaming, AI is the next narrative. A narrative is key, but it's not enough. Project founders also need a strategy. What's the difference between a narrative and a strategy? It depends on terminology, right? I think the the I think for me, I think uh, I I think uh, narrative and strategy are very related, very very related. Um, the the reason is because um, strategy is fun like strategy, right? Is fundamentally about getting people to do what you want them to do, right? Critical, right? Uh, strategy is strategy is is about successfully getting a set of people and a set of systems, right? You know, lining up. You know, for you to you you want your you want the allies to follow you, your team to follow you to doing something, right? You know, and for your enemies to not do something. Right? That's how it works, right? So basically, that's that strategy. And and narratives about narratives are how you communicate, right? Mm. So in this case, I think it's not so much that it's not about strategy, narrative, not enough, and it's all about strategy. It's more like it's critical to understand that strategy and narrative, right, are two sides of the same coin. You know, mm -hmm. if you have a very, very even if you even if you're able to predict every single thing, you um you get you get all the circumstances right, you get all the capabilities correct, everything and stuff, but you're not able to not not able to communicate in a way that people will follow and understand and follow, right? You know, it wouldn't work. And similarly, if you're if you're very focused on communicating in. Right, but you're not being cognizant of like, okay, what do people need? Right, what the realities of the ground is? Right, what what your capabilities are? Right, then it's very difficult as well. Right, then you're, then you're about to fail. Right, so in many ways, I think you need both. Right, mm -hmm. you strategy is about understanding the game, the realities of the ground, and also uh, what the and, and 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 what your capabilities are and all that stuff, and developing a, a a plan accordingly. And narrative is about figuring out how do you communicate in a way. Right, you know, that makes people follow you or back off or anything. Mm. Right? So that game, so I think it's an yin and yang thing. You know? So strategy and narrative is yin and yang. You can never, never, never have strategy with a narrative. Strategy with a narrative is uh is delusion. Right? So, sorry, narrative without strategy is delusion. 
right? And strategy of a narrative is like, um, you know, who is that Greek legend that pushed the rock up the hill? Sisyphus? Sisyphus? The guy, you know? Sisyphus, I'm not sure. Yeah, but, but yeah, so it's actually rich, yeah. <laughs> so narrative is needed, strategy is needed. There's something else that's really needed, even in crypto, even though people tend to forget it. Patience. You told me I want to make Jupiter a household name in the next three years, but three I'm years. patient. Uh, uh, yeah, three years. Three years. Interesting. Okay, I said three years. Or you said three years. Only um, five. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm patient. Explain why patience is so important. Oh, because patience and resilience are the same thing, right? Because I feel like um, <clears throat> because I feel like um, like ah, uh, mm. because things always um. Things always take longer than you think. Mm. And then they happen all at once. Yeah. If they work well, things happen all at once. I, I feel like the thing that people need to understand is that like, um, um, the, the, the reason why patience and resilience is very important, right? Is because things often, especially in our space, right? They just work very, very slowly, right? Everything just seems to be very, very slow, right? Mm. And many, many times you feel like giving up or you feel like it's not going to work out or feel like it's too long. Right, and I'm saying this, and then you leave, right? But then when you leave halfway um, in, in the cycle, right? Whether it's your startup cycle or development cycle or market cycle, you are, it's really hard because you really lose all the work you did in the beginning. Yeah. You know, right? And you just like lose it, I think. So I think that's, that's what's sad about it, I think. I yeah. talked about that with a TN from Pendle who was also at Kyber, right? A couple of years ago. And he said that his key learning from Kyber decentralized finance and decentralized exchanges early on was he left late 2018, basically pretty much at the bottom of the bear market. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But then the DeFi summer happened in 2020. So oh. then, then he realized it's all about that, right? You should be patient and stay in there. And if you stick to what you're doing, then everything happened at once. And it's the same, it was what happened with Pendle, right? It yeah, yeah. started a couple of years ago and, then, and now basically it's taking off. So that's, yeah, his key, that's his key amazing. learning. Like, 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 like there, were, there were so many, there were so many competitors to Panda and stuff that were more funded, but they were more famous and they just didn't stay, you know? They, they just did a lot of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't have conviction in the, the thesis, right? Of you, of, of you being, like of you being a big market, mm -hmm. right? Of you markets being a big market, right? And then uh, it's funny because like a few years later, we saw all these, like, we saw a massive amount of like um, liquid staking and everything, right? Mm -hmm. And just massive happening across like, not just many chains, right? Mm -hmm. So it just, and then because they were there and then they were patient, they, they got it. It was great. I love the story. It's a great story. Yeah. Talking about Kyber, we need to talk about decentralized finance. One of oh. the big inventions in the last few years is decentralized finance. What's the power of decentralized finance? Freedom. Freedom. Fucking freedom. Uh, no, really, seriously. You remember, remember how we talked about So, So for me, everything comes back to one thing, right? Mm. Billions of chains billions of tokens, mm. okay? Freedom of money, freedom of transaction, mm. okay? Like freedom of money creation, freedom of transaction, okay? Like freedom of ideas, freedom of capital. All these things is unified by one thing, right? Decentralized finance, okay? Nothing in this, nothing, nothing ever works, okay? If you don't have enough, um, like nothing ever works and stuff, if you have to identify, nothing. Now, you, 99, like, like even, like even you might, you might not consider a, a Bitcoin as DeFi, but it is DeFi. Okay, but I mean, do, it, what, how it's not DeFi? Do you think a central government said, let's trade Bitcoin? No, it wasn't, right? Bitcoin is DeFi. Mm. Ethereum is DeFi. Litecoin is DeFi. Mm. Okay, it's all DeFi. Okay, it's a freedom of creating. It's all about, like people talk about DeFi as if it started by, you know, like something. No, no, it's not. It will start like at the very, very, very genesis of De DeFi whenever someone creates a financial system and stuff that is not centralized, it's DeFi. So stop, mm. right? And Bitcoin just happened and there were, there, were, there, were, there were many, many things happened before Bitcoin, right? That's considered DeFi, okay? But Bitcoin just happened to be the first like DeFi, like success, success, big successful one. And then Ethereum came up and now we are seeing, and now with Solana, it finally become like cheap, cheap, like really, really cheap, mm. you know, for anyone to do it, right? And it's all about freedom. DeFi is critical because of freedom, Yeah. You talked about one word, one keyword in there, global, uh, unified. Mm -hmm. And there's one uh, key topic that you like to talk about, which is global unified markets. Yeah. And it's basically 
that, right? Yes. But not only in crypto. It's talking about other assets that are out there and putting everything together so that people can transact, right? So one thing, one thing that I'm actually deeply passionate about, right? And I really want Jupiter to, 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 to really push on this really hard, right? Is the idea of a global unique market. Because like the, 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 the single biggest difference between a, uh, is the idea of, we call, we call it GAM, right? G-U-M. It's a global unified market, right? Whereby every single possible asset class in the world is unified in one single like UX or API. That's, as, that's easily accessible from anything to anything. So you can, you can easily go from you can easily go from meme coin to a to a to wine, easily go from you know something to a bond, right? You know, someone in Africa can easily get a, a stock, you know, um, a, a American index, right? You know, or any of those things. I think that that that, that, that that's actually the because what is happening in the world today is that you have many many markets, right? They're all fragmented and separated in their own way, right? And Nasdaq is their own thing, CM is their own thing, everything's their own thing, right? You know, and, and because centralized systems are fundamentally ununifiable, you know? So, 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 and because they're fundamentally ununifiable, mm. you need a lot of like really weird systems, like sweet, like, 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 uh, like, like because they're all centralized, right? Mm. Because so you need a lot of weird systems like Swift and like a uh, Libor and blah, 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 and an interchange system, blah. Then all these like really complicated and really expensive and really like messy and stuff, need a man, right? To actually do all these transactions. Right, I mean, take remittance for example. Right, it's like remittance. There's no reason why remittance should be so expensive. But as you all know, right, sending money from A to B is actually really expensive because so whether it's fees, the spread, the exchange rate. Most people who went to send money, they don't even know what the real exchange rate is. Right, you know, between the thing, just yeah. okay, cool. Yeah. So yeah. is it three percent, five percent, ten percent? Just close your eyes and pray and yeah, see yeah, what, I get, what I get. <laughs> Precisely, yeah. right? So I feel like that, 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 that's actually one thing that I think uh, should be demolished, right? Yeah. I think, I think uh, so, so I think what, what, I, what, what, what I think is really important, what's, what, what I think is a really powerful thing about, about DeFi, right? You know, is that we can actually have the ability, right? To create new assets, to bring on existing assets, and also to kind of like, a, and, and really bridge it with the day-to-day -day life of the user. You know, mm. yeah, whether it's like whether, whether it's fiat systems or payment systems, whatever, you know, yeah. So basically, you can imagine a world whereby the entire, whereby users, they, have, they still have their regular interfaces to everyday life, whether it's like, whether it's a credit card or whether it's a payment or whether it's or getting goods and everything, right? But but the back end that drives all the transaction is decentralized, mm. you know? Yeah, that, and, 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 and that's the world Jupiter wants to unify. And, 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 and again, this is something that actually would be completely like a, like, think about it. You should be able to go to an airport, right? And and scan something and get currency out. Mm -hmm. Right? And and you shouldn't even need to know like what and you shouldn't you should need to know kind of like what how that whole thing worked. Just that like and, and put a, like you can sell anything you want, or even even better, right? Loan your soul and get something out. You should you shouldn't even know how the whole thing works. Mm -hmm. That's in the, and you, you just trust that okay, cool, all right, this is routed, this is routed and ex executed in a way that is extremely fair. And you do have the trust now, you know? So that, 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 that's actually what transparency and openness can bring you. How far away from this word? Five years. Five? Five, I think five, yeah, roughly five. Yeah, mainly, mainly because I think that there's actually a lot of like, um, like technical and logistics barrier and stuff. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think, I think a prototype and stuff pretty, pretty soon, you know, but actually uh, actual, actually ready, like five years. Yeah, I think, like widespread, five years. Yeah, I think so. You said, don't be mid be anything else, be virtuous, be devilish, better yet, be both, never be neither, neither is the way of the mid, don't be mid. Your mom, we love moms here, especially the mom. Asian ones. Uh, your, no, no, I your, love all, I'm sorry. <laughs> your mom will be sad if you're mid. I think so, I think so, I think so. Uh, I think, so. I think, I, think um, um, I, I don't know, I, I, I just think that most people always try to find the, um, the middle ground, the conventional way, you know, like, like I think, I think so many people, they do strategy. Um, so, so many people, and I, I see, I, I work through so many different things. Like so many people try to live their life in a way that is acceptable to most people, right? And even in, the funny thing is even in crypto, right? Most people really try really hard, you know, to be acceptable, you know, mm -hmm. to everyone else, mm -hmm. right? And I, I think, I think as a result, I think you, you see everyone like, um, like doing like very like standard and strict, like very standard, I always tell my team this, okay, like, okay, if, if you, if, if someone, if you publish this, 
what is the chance that someone thinks that this comes with ChatGPT? You know, right? If there's a more than fifty percent chance that someone thinks so, you suck. Mm. You know, full stop. Mm. Right? And 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 I, I think it's actually really really important to understand because like in the in the world of AI, right? In the world of AI, the cost and effort needed to produce mediocre work, right? It's like fucking nothing, mm. right? That means that if you are someone that produces mid work, mm. right, you are worse than the AI. Mm. You know, like seriously, you know. So you you really, as as a human being, right, and as someone that you know your mom will be proud of and stuff, right? You really want to be more than AI, you know, like like your did, did, like did your mom give birth to you for you to be like you know taken over by AI? She didn't, you know what I'm saying? I think so. Mm. Um, yeah. So I, I I think that's actually really important to to just be like, hey, you know what? How do I be um, how do I be extreme? How do I how do I find the most unique um? What how do I find the most unique uh, the best or the worst set of myself, you know, and really express it, you know? So I think it's important, yeah. Otherwise, I think it's me, you know? so. You said, I'm a mental Iron Man. What do you mean by that? Uh, I mean, I said it's a joke, you know, but I, 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 I mostly said that I'm like anti-fat. I'm like fat. I'm, I'm really kind of like used to fat at this point, you know, like people, like, uh, I, I think, like, I, I, I kind of have a very clear sense of like, um, what I'm, what my intention is, and then um, I, 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 I think we say that in the context of us thinking about like, um, okay, if 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 we bring on a, a controversial person, mm. right, you know, that the world might not like, you know, to come and talk to, come and come and have a conversation with him, right, then uh, then a, a lot of people in the a lot of people in the space might criticize, go, hey, why are you enabling this guy? Mm. And why are you talking him? I think as long as my, that, but then as long as my intention is very clean, right? I'm like, okay, cool. All right. Um, I want to make, I, I think it's, I think it's be very valuable, right? You know, for everyone to get their point of view, mm. you know? It's not about endorsing anyone. It's about just getting their point of view, right? And similarly, if I, if I do something uh, that, that might look weird to someone, um, but as long as I have a very clear intention, I, I, I'm very happy to be defending it, mm. you know? And I feel like that's actually where I'm right now. I think where I'm right now is that I am, I'm at the point of by I I'm really quite able to um stand with my point of view and push it through even if a uh, large chunks of the world don't understand or agree mm. you know and and that actually requires a, a good amount of fortitude you know mm. it's like when the whole world is like pressuring you on something right to be able to say okay you know what it's fine you know, I'm just gonna I'm I'm I I'm gonna express myself very clearly. I'm gonna take care of her, I'm gonna take care of her feelings, right? You know, but I'm gonna do it. Mm. I, I feel like I'm gonna push it, right? You know, I think uh, that that I think I think that quality is actually very important because if you don't have that quality of being able to um um withstand large amounts of um fat of or, or or uncertainty or fears, right? Then I think you will always end up doing the most comfortable thing. Mm. You know, yeah. I think, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think that's very important. Yeah. I think if you think about it, right, it's like, you know, if you go for actual Iron Man, that is not comfortable. That's like probably the most uncomfortable thing you can do, right? Mm. Yeah, to going uh, physically, you mm. know, going for actual Iron Man, yeah. you know, but I think it will also be the most rewarding thing you can do as well, right? So I think similarly, in some sense, I think, uh, you know, I think um, if you embark, if, if, you, if you live a life and you, you run your project in a way that you have the same mentality, you know, where you are willing to push yourself to do uncomfortable things, you know, um, then I think that is, that's actually where I think you might find the most enjoyment and fulfillment. Yeah. Why are you doing all of this? Everything. Fun. Fun. Uh, so I, uh, manifestation, I think that's a big one. Uh, manifestation, there's a certain, um, there's a certain version of the world I want to see, mm. you know, uh, and, I, and I want to power that world. You know, I want to part that. I, 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 okay, it's, 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 it's a great way to summarize everything. Um, so I think that there's a version of the world I see, right? I see a world where there is absolute freedom that everyone, there's no more, um, there's no more, um, like, and, and no one questions gravity anymore. I mean, or no, one, no one questions bacteria anymore, mm. right? We all, at this point in time, we all have, we are pretty clear about like bacteria and like physics and stuff. So we are able to create new things as a world, right? And, but the world had to understand physics and bio and how things work before we can move forward, right? Same thing as well, right? I think the world needs to actually understand money, right? 
uh, in a very deep way, right? And not not in a way that was um, taught to us like way back, mm. you know? So, so, so I, 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 I want to see the world, just like how the world understands like physics and bio, everything, right? I want the world to understand money. First thing, right? Secondly, I want, I, that, that, that's, that's from a literacy point of view, right? Secondly, is that I want the world, secondly, is that I want the world to also be, feel free to create billions of monies, you know? And, and, have a, and have a system that's able to unify all these things regardless of how many mm-hmm. money, how much money is in there, in the one system, right? And thirdly is that I want, I, I, and thirdly is that I want to make all these things useful, mm. you know, to actually like deeply embed, like, deep, like deeply embed all these like new money and new systems start into one thing, into one cohesive whole, right? Into a, a parallel like, universe, you know, that we all live in, right? And, 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 and I think I really see that world happening, you know, and I think, um, and I think, so I think my main motivation is that I think I really want to uh, make that world happen, you know, across all three fronts, across, uh, across the literacy, and making sure that people understand the new world we live in, mm. um, and the fundamental laws, right? You know, like the meme, everything. Um, create the systems, you know, and build the bridges to their everyday assistance. Yeah, so I think that, 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 that's the world I really um, uh, yeah. think what needs to happen. You know, I, want, I, think, I, I think I want to manifest that, and I think uh, and I want to have fun doing it, and I want to do it with people I like, you know, both in terms of my team, the community, friends, you know, anyone, no, who wants to power this thing. Yeah, that's it. That's how that's drives me. Yeah. If you met your 18 years old self today, what would you tell him? What makes you think I'm not 18? What makes you think I'm not 18? Because hey. we have one year with uh, <laughs> um, close to 18 already. I will say, I will say this thing. I mean, I will, I will tell him this. I will like, dude, you've gone through a lot of shit, bro. You know, but it's gonna work out. Don't worry. Mm. Yeah, it's gonna work out. Yeah, it's gonna work out. Yeah. I think. Uh, yeah, I think. I think. Um, I think. I. I think being a. I think being a a really big like social misfit and uh and uh and everything and basically not having any friends for like the first eighteen years of my life was extremely foundational, right? To me being able to say fuck you to a lot of things. You know, it's like, okay, it's like, okay. I mean, I, I, you know, if I, I mean, I, I, I survived like, you know, 20 years of not having, not having friends. So it's like, I can do it. Yeah. Why do you say you were a social misfit? Oh, long story, man. Check out my blog, you know, yeah, it's all there, you know, but, but to long, long, long story short is that I think, um, long story short is that I think, uh, yeah, I just never got along, you know, I just never, um, I was always in a very painful cycle of, like trying to find myself and fitting in and never quite doing either, you know? Mm. Yeah, until I realized that there really is no such thing. You can never fit in and you can never be yourself. You know, it's always this like um, um, a, a individual and a society is like oil, oil, oil and water, you mm. know, right? I'm serious, like society, an uh, individual and society is like a drop of oil, you know, in a vast ocean of water. Mm. Um, you are that is stirred violently, you know? You're always, you're always, you're bound to be commingled, you know? But I'm never going to be one, you know? Right, so I think that's how it works. I, I, it, it took me a while to be comfortable with that, you know? Do you yeah. think it's the case for everyone or do you think it's the case for everyone. like the, the mega entrepreneur no, every- who is challenging everything all the time no, and everyone. therefore doesn't fit? No, everyone, everyone, everyone. No one, no one genuinely fits, no one. We're all individuals. We're all individuals. Like even even the most like normal person that you meet on the train, right? He's an individual, and every individual is unique and is uh and 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 special in their own way, hundred percent. You know, yeah, hundred fucking percent. Yeah, no, no one. Yeah, no matter how much someone fits in to society per se, he's still himself. Yeah, it's always true. You know, yeah, and I think I think I think we, I think we just have to be. And, and in fact. One of the things it goes back to one of the things we were talking about earlier, right? Um, the idea that I think uh, you know there's two classes of people and stuff like uh, you know like someone who is a mega entrepreneur or whatever, and then everybody else or, or people who are meant to be rebels and everyone else. I don't think that is like the case. You know, I actually think that that's actually um just I just think that everyone should just like be very very comfortable and try to find out who they are, right? Um, without trying to fit into um without um, like um, 
without feeling pressure either way, right? They shouldn't feel a lot of pressure to fit in or feel a lot of pressure not to fit in. I feel like nowadays, if you look at it, now, now, nowadays, I, I feel like the turn is turning, man. I feel like in the past, there used to be, oh, you should fit in. But now it's like, oh, you shouldn't fit in. You should be a rebel, everything. <laughs> I don't know, man. It doesn't work that way. Always one extreme or the other. Yeah, I feel like, in fact, one of the things that I feel I felt a lot of happiness in is when I fitted in. You know what I'm saying? Right? When I, okay, yeah, cool, all right, I, I find my own way of fitting in. You know what I'm saying? Mm. I feel happy. I feel happy. Yeah, I, I'm not kidding. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so I think, but I think if you, so I feel like happiness is the guy. Yeah. You said it took you 10, 20 years to kind of find yourself. What uh -huh. was the turning point? Or what, what changed? Oh, fuck. Uh, deep question. Uh, honestly, um, starting my current team. Having my current team and now having uh, the community, the community uh, having, having a current team, um, having a community we have at Jupiter, I think um, yeah, those things really, really help, help me. Yeah, because I think, um, because My style, again, it's not everybody's style, right? If everyone has their own style, right? But I think uh, for me, I guess uh, I had to create my own community, right? You know, my own, uh, my own uh, set of ideas, my own set of ethos, I'm my own set of like op uh, operating model, I'm uh, my own set of like uh, ecosystem and everything, right? For me to be comfortable mm. in. Yeah, so I think, that, I think that, that's, that's the reason why I started feeling more comfortable <laughs> because I think uh, I... I could um, kind of like create my own space, you know? I don't have to, um, yeah, so I think that's so important for me because I created my own space and communities and ideas and stuff that, yeah, that's why I think that's what changed for me, yeah. What's your biggest prediction for the next 12 months? I, I, I got no predictions, bro. I got no predictions. I got no, I think, I think the, the um, my biggest prediction is that we know nothing. Yeah, and we, um, With nothing. I think every single prediction that I've seen this year have failed dramatically. Mm. You know? Yeah. Um, so I, I, I'm not into predictions. But I think what I'm really into right now is I'm really into understanding um, like all the um, the first principles. You know? About both in terms of product, what kind of products people need, um, how to understand money, how to understand memes, you know, and how to understand community and experimenting my way into it. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. So I, I do have predictions, but it does. My ethos is that my ethos for the next 12 months is that I'm going to um, you know experiment my way out of life. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to aggressively and um, hopefully courageously, you know, experiment experiment into finding answers I want. Yeah. For example. The the uh, so many so many examples. I think uh, like Jupiter is going to hold three uh, I announced I announced three extremely consequential votings, mm -hmm. votes for proposals for Jupiter. You know, and the community, community can decide what they're going to do with it. You know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a really big deal. Um, I know I'm, 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 I'm helping to launch a, uh, a coin, you know, and hoping and seeing if I can start a new meta, a new PPP meta for that. You know, um, I, you know I, I, I've, taken, I've taken some extremely strong steps towards like um, um, a, 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 a community first idea for the Juke token, mm. right? You know, uh, where I think, you know, um, And I, I, I'm not sure if it'll pay off in terms of the market responding, you know, but I don't really care. Hmm. You know, I, would, I, I think it's writing for, for me to do, you know? Um, and yeah, I think there'll be a, a lot more experiments in the product in terms of like uh, ideas, in terms, of, in terms of writing, everything. Yeah, what so about, I own the experiments. Yeah. What about personal ones? Personal right? experiments? Personal life experiments? Joker. <laughs> Joker. <laughs> Off topic. <laughs> I'm testing the limits. I think uh, I found them. Sorry? Testing, I'm testing, uh, the, I'm the, testing the, the, the edge of the comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I decided I, I would stepped step. outside. Oh, we're going to get I, back yes, in. I, I, decided, I decided I would step back in. <laughs> <laughs> amazing, yeah. That was amazing. Thank you so much for doing that. So, amazing conversation. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's so funny. So funny. Good job. Was that?